Ah, gotcha. All right. Well, if you do, we'll, we will be, we're professionals. We'll know what to do. And It'll all work German out fine. Food, you know. Yeah, you're like my dog. You get, you get marble in, marble out. That's how it works. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's kind of annoying. I sometimes try to break the habit just on principle, but you know, yeah, it's such a stupid thing. It's your body. I get it. We all have one. Um, all right, here goes then. Recording has started. We are off to the races in three, two, one. I sense a soul. I sense a soul. I sense a soul in search of answers. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Core. This is Core, and it's a big podcast where we talk about stuff around video games, getting distilled down into a fine, ingestible jelly for you, the listener, each and every week. I'm Scott Johnson with John Jagger and Bo Schwartz, and it's good to be back, everybody. I would like to mention something today. Video games are great. While my wife was gone, she's home anytime now, by the way. I'm just waiting for the dogs to start barking because I'm sure they're going to walk in anytime. Oh, I thought... I didn't mean. I didn't know you meant she could be home anytime. I just thought you were like anytime now she could be home. She could be home. She could be anywhere. Who knows where my wife is? No, she's on her way back from Vegas. She had a nice uh, girls trip out there with my daughter and some friends, and and uh, they should be arriving any minute. And so for the entire week or so, I have had to sort of fend for myself in lots of ways that I forget. When she's around, I, I take for granted some of the cool stuff she does right in our lives, and I have to say, video games got me through it and by that i mean yep. it kept me up way too late on a steam deck and gave me a crick in my neck and made it hard to sleep so thanks video games you did it yeah you, you helped me get through a week of being a bachelor once again nice yeah it all worked out fine uh let's get to it we got a lot to talk about one, today oh go yeah, ahead I got, I got one more piece of business give just it. to i gotta clear up some issues with the pre-show give it uh crazy turkish in the chat room yeah is like getting real mad because I keep calling it German food. He's like, it's Turkish. Oh. And because it's called crazy Turkish, maybe he knows. I don't know the crazy. <laughs> like, he's he's Turkish, but he's crazy. So, I, But, yes, I, I am aware of that, that it is Turkish. So, hold on. What uh, are we? It's, just, it's a German place I got it from. It's called Wolfdown. The pun's intended. You know. <laughs> Wolf. Wolfdown. Um, yeah, okay. yeah. But, yes, you're right. It's There's a lot of Turkish immigrants. Of course, to Germany, it's a thing over there. I, I watched, on my stream, I watched a bunch of channels about the history of the Duner and people reviewing Duner joints in Germany. So, anyways, but sorry for miscrediting because I felt a little bad making it seem like... Well, for those of us who've never heard of a Duner before, uh, just real quick, it's like a little pockety, sandwichy, grilled thing, kind of almost like a panini, it looked yeah. like, or something. I'm going to get some more trouble by calling it a panini, aren't I? No, it's it's pressed bread. Like the, I don't think it always looks like that. The place that I got it from, Wolfdown, um, it presses it like a panini. You're okay, right. all right. I like a panini. I like a pressed grilled That's why I like uh, it. thing yeah. with the bread. You get the light. And the the chicken is. Oh, it's not like shawarma chicken. It's not dry. The chicken there is like juicy and succulent oh gosh dang it man all right well making us hungry anyway right sorry here, but... i know it's not game related and i know it's you know weird way to start off the show but for those who listen to the pre-show by subbing at patreon.com this will provide added context and quell their rage before they start because i assume the listening order is main show pre-show yeah i'd love to hear from anyone who's a pre-show main show listener apart from uh, the live chat room yeah obviously the live chat is a everything yeah. a viewer but this is um, important. I'm glad we did this. Me too. Uh, now I know what the donor. I used to think the donor party would. Eat, if it was the donor party, they wouldn't have had to eat, eat, eat each other. Hey, there's an old throwback to an American folklore thing from the old history of the U.S. Ignore me. All right, it's time for us to dig into. Well, I'm afraid it's another uh, delayed game. Uh, although I think it's probably okay. <laughs> what? Yeah, <laughs> really. <laughs> this, Another delayed game. This week, here's what's weird. Um, this, I swear to you, and I, I don't say this as a generalization. A lot of the exact same people that I saw when uh, Fallout 76 came out and was borked and had all kinds of problems and was undercooked, by all means or by all accounts, that game's in great shape right now. But at the time, launched pretty much busted, and. The same people that were angry at Bethesda for releasing a busted game are the same people I'm seeing be mad about a delayed Bethesda game. And of course they're being careful with this one. This is a gigantic title, Starfield, which I didn't mention yet. 
Starfield's a huge game. They can't just half-ass this one. It can't be not done. If there's time to polish it, please do. It's Microsoft money now, so they have the time and the money. They can do it. So just let it be. I would rather have that thing look good, be good, be done, be finished, or as best as they can, and not be a jank fest on day one. So to those people, yeah, I say... It's a Bethesda game, so yeah. their destiny's already written. It's going to be full of bugs. People are going to complain about it. But people are also going to play it for 10 years. Look at Skyrim. Yeah, look at that. Skyrim, one of the most uh, influential things ever. It's an amazing game. Yeah, you and VR playing Skyrim. I never know what kind of... Oh, man, Starfield VR. Oh. Well, you think they'll mod it? Why are you getting excited about it? What if Starfield's garbage? (laughs) Well, that's not with that attitude. Well, yeah, you're right. If it's garbage, I won't care. But I'm, I'm assuming some pedigree here with it being a mainline Bethesda joint. But you're right. Could be garbage. You're right. I'm going to go ahead and guess that it will not be garbage. That it will be... (laughs) Middle of the road. (laughs) (laughs) It may not be the greatest game ever made, but I'll bet it's good. And I'll bet we like it. I'll bet bet it's going to be fine. And I have no problem with them taking some extra polish time. Good news is this. If you thought, well, I don't want to wait until September, which is when it's going to be. Or sorry. Yeah, September this year. It was originally November of last year. They bumped it. It was supposed to be sometime in the first quarter. This is technically a bump from that and is now September 6th. So early fall is when you'll get this thing, or I guess. Yeah, yeah it was fall. a release date announcement and a delay kind of all mixed into one. It was like, well, we technically didn't release it. Oh, well, you're also technically releasing later than the window you said. That's true. So it's a little bit of both. I Look, I want Starfield to be good. And I think of the three of us, obviously I'm the one who is the most concerned because I think right away from the very first reveal, I was the one saying like, yeah, but doesn't it look bad? Um, <laughs> and uh, I, I, I stand by it. So here's, here's the good news. There's an event coming on June 11th yeah. where they're going to show more of the game yeah. and they have the chance to win me over uh, because right now everything I've seen about Starfield is sure. But it also kind of looks bad. I don't know and, why you, think you know it looks John's bad. not wrong because I think of the Skyrim trailer and I watched the Skyrim trailer. I think no joke, five hundred three thousand twenty six times. Mm. Like that trailer is amongst the greatest trailers of any game of all time. Even now, you will get hyped for that game, and it's been out for ten years if you watch that trailer. Yeah, Starfield trailer. I'm like, yeah, I saw it. <laughs> yeah. I saw some grays and, and browns. Like there's some space in there. Okay. Yeah. Like. I think, you know, John, John, John's detector is telling him something, you know. And I think that they are, um, I get what you're saying, but I think I think in the end, whatever, I'm optimistic about that game. It's going to be really great, and maybe the tone of the game doesn't need it, so it doesn't fit, you're not a, a Dovahkiin fighting dragons, you know, you're a space slub, hopefully, trying to make it in a cold, hard world yeah very different game that's the thing i think everybody is filling in what this game hasn't shown yet and you can be optimistic about it like scott you can be realistic like uh, me um or you know you you can just yeah you can you can just say how you want to say about it but like nothing about the combat that they showed in that looked incredible it looked passable uh, nothing about the worlds that I saw made me go, oh, I have to go visit this. Like, I, right now, I would love for it to be good because I think space games are great. Um, I would love another, you know, No Man's Sky type game to play. I just haven't been sold yet. But okay. they're going, they're going to try. I June think 11th, you've seen that's a lot of when space. they're going to try. Yeah. Skyrim also was really good on the, like, here's a dragon like that one was like whoa not just one dragon they're everywhere yeah this one's like we're in space and you're like so this is the five millionth trailer of space i've seen in my life like you know the novelty factor is low so sure yeah and it's a little harder sell for sure you don't have that you know, we don't have a testicle monster that they showed us or anything to get excited about no so. they did show something toward the end of the trailer like this this business here that i'm showing to the chat this looks like Oh, there's some kind of weird mystical uh, hyper intelligence, and you're you're right there having to deal with it, and then it explodes, and then there's your logo. I don't know. Who knows? But I don't think John. By that logic, if you watch the first Mass Effect trailer back in the day, pre-release oh. Mass Effect, <laughs> there's nothing about that trailer that made me go, "Ooh, end all, be all, whatever." You know what I mean? Like that. that feels- yeah, you're you're right. Mass Effect was a. 
incredible surprise for me because I was not like sitting on my hands going, I can't wait for this game. I can't wait for this game. It was a game that came out and I was like, I'll go for a sci-fi action game, I guess. And I started playing it and went, holy shit, this is an amazing game. Wow, this is incredible. Yeah. Um, I, I, games can surprise you. Yeah. You know, and I, I hope to be surprised by Starfield. If it's good, I yeah. would be surprised. Yeah. I think you have a big I, it, John has a bad case of BB that stands for Bethesda bias and it's okay that he has it. I don't have a problem I, with him having it. Like for real though, what has Bethesda done recently that has earned the benefit of the doubt? All right, I'll give you a couple of examples. Okay, um, let's go. I think that how recent do you want to go? <laughs> oh, wait. Because when you say recent, you mean like you mean like big releases in the last year? Are you saying like during you know post uh, like between two thousand and now? Like That's what's your kind of an unfair okay? So thing. everybody talks about Skyrim, right? What great thing have they done since Skyrim? Okay, well, I would argue that Fallout Four was a great game. I would argue I that... hated Fallout Four. Well, that I doesn't mean it wasn't a great I thought, game. I thought Fallout Three was a vastly better game than Four. I mean, look, I think New Vegas is better than all of them, and it's not even they're not even the developers. They just published it and provided the engine but um uh so i okay i'm gonna say by all accounts again this is a, a an issue of whether you can get over the botch launch or not but by all accounts fallout 76 is a really good game like i, I don't think you can say 76 because it's been bad for so long the fact that it's good now well it's not good like today it's been good for a, it's been good for a while now like 76 fans would, would tell you that it, that they have not that they have loved that game now for fans scott there were people who were still playing like Star Wars Galaxies after it died that were fans that would have told you like, oh, it's the greatest game ever. Yeah. Well, that, to like, them it they're was. They're the fans. Yeah. To them it was. Okay. Let Steve me go. Steve Amaker still plays Star Wars Galaxies. He does. He has a he private does. server thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you know what? That server isn't built on the latest version of Star Wars Galaxies. It's built on a very specific iteration of yeah, it. Yeah. It's, it's just fans running servers and stuff. What about ESO, Scott? Uh, <laughs> I mean, look, ESO, well, you, I, would put, I would put that on that ESO list. ESO release. I would, I would put that on that list. And that came out after Skyrim. ESO is a great MMO. I also think that. Um, uh, other examples are those two, uh, uh, the two stealthy games. The, um, the stealthy games. Dishonored. Dishonored one and two, amazing games, both post uh, post uh, Skyrim. Uh, and those I are guess Bethesda Doom titles. Counts as Bethesda, Doom Eternal counts as a Bethesda game. I so does, yeah, but, here and so like, does Doom Twenty Sixteen. Doom Eternal is worse than the Doom before it. Yeah, but the Doom before it is okay. also Bethesda. John, John's, John, John's in the John corner. Now. <laughs> <laughs> I do see chat. They're trying to make He's a losing. point for you, and they're saying, like, is No Man's Sky a good game? And I would say, yeah, it is. So to Scott's point, Fallout 76 might be good. But if No Man's Sky, was uh, their developer was going, hey, we're making a new game. It's going to be this big open world, millions of planets you can visit. Uh, touting it, I don't think you should give them the benefit of the doubt. I think you should be cautiously, maybe cautiously optimistic because they fixed their crap eventually. Right. But I don't think you should immediately go, well, they made No Man's Sky, which is a phenomenal game now. I'm going to ignore all those months that it was janky and yeah, bad. Yeah, I agree with that. I wouldn't do that. Um, What's the opposite of benefit of the doubt? Uh, d d um, um, benefit of the... Not even benefit. It'd be. It, what's the opposite of benefit? Is it the 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 detriment of a <laughs> detriment of the doubt? Like, what do you say when it's the reverse? I gotta give them the detriment of detriment the doubt. of a surety would be the opposite <laughs> of benefit of the doubt, right? The detriment. Well, I'm what? just trying to think. What's the opposite of doubt? Because doubt usually means you doubt them, but in this context, you're saying I won't doubt you, but you're oh, using right. the negative word. So I'm like, so when you want to say, oh, I doubt them, you give them. Am I giving them the benefit of the trust? Benefit of the trust or the lack. But it's so confusing. Like, what's this expression, benefit of the doubt? It really needs to go. It just means it's... you're giving them the benefit of, uh, of because, you know. Oh, my doubt? Well, like, <laughs> like, I comes, doubt you? Like, it comes that's from benefit? court stuff, like right? It. it comes from court stuff, like reasonable doubt and all that. I think that's the origin of it. So when you say. Reasonable doubt, see, it makes sense to me. But a benefit, right? Like, Scott, I'm giving you the benefit of my doubt. I doubt you're going to eat healthy while Kim's gone. Here's the benefit <laughs> of my doubt. <laughs> like, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. <laughs> it's like. I give you the benefit of my trust that you're going to take care of yourself and eat well. You shouldn't have done that. 
I mean, you shouldn't give me any. You shouldn't have given me any credit that I would eat healthy while Kim was gone. Let's put it that way. I, yeah. I, I did okay. The, I never the went fit of the trust. I never did any DoorDashy kind of delivery stuff. I never did any junk food. I never did any of that. I ate like Stouffer's microwave meal things a lot. They're not the, they're not the yeah. best thing. They're frozen freaking dinners, but they were good and they were small yeah. and the calories weren't bad. So I don't feel that bad about how I did. Yeah. But, I'm just saying that I don't see doubt as a benefit, so I don't know why I'd give anyone the benefit of my doubt. Maybe the doubt I'm, is man, meant to them. be doubt in the other direction. No, meaning... it's it's the fact that you go, hey, look, I have some doubts, but given your history, I'm going to give you the benefit over it. Oh. The benefit of not doubting. So it's yes. the ben- I'm going to give you the benefit of not doubting. It should be the expression. Yeah. Or... Not the, <laughs> like, that's what I'm like. Let me give you the benefit of... Uh, let's use a different like, word. The benefit of the doubt is to say, I have a reason to suspect that I'm going to be let down, but I'm still going to side with you, essentially. <laughs> Chat room. I'm going to give you the benefit of my mistrust. <laughs> Chat room says, does anyone else smell toast? I think we all do right now about this. All right, I just anyway, I got really point, hung up on that. <laughs> point is this. There are actually Bethesda games I've liked since Skyrim, but the point, I, I think the point I'm trying to convey yeah. is that they do not have a flawless track record no. that deserves unabashed loyalty where people are like, you're not excited about Starfield? What the hell is wrong with you? Yeah. Don't you know... Didn't you play Skyrim? Because that's what everybody says. They're like, didn't you play Skyrim? Skyrim? Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, yeah, I did. Guess what? I still don't think that one thing makes it to where Starfield is an immediate, obvious success. I still need to be shown. Skyrim is a little borked at launch as well. We always forget that, right? And there was some big bugs in that game when it happened. Oh, Bethesda, yeah, it will definitely have be Bugville for sure. Yeah, it'll have something. It still doesn't... It's not going to make or break whether this is a good release or not. Right. However, I think they've been working hard on it. It's a new IP. Todd seems, if I read my Toddometer, like, you know, (laughs) if I just gauge Todd's uh, excitedness about it versus maybe some just PR stuff, seems a little on the genuine side. I don't know. He's pretty stoked about it, clearly. Look, this is not the most pressing issue about this pushback. The pushback of the launch date is how close it is to Baldur's Gate 3 launch date. Mm. Now, Bethesda games are f- appeal to a wider audience than Baldur's Gate 3, so f- I think I don't think I don't think Bethesda, I, neither company is going to suffer like sales-wise. People who want Baldur's Gate have bought it already. And, yeah. you know, a lot of people are going to buy or get Game Pass. So there's n- not those issues, but right. my time. Yeah. They're within a week of each other. Yeah. I'm and I have to now choose between two beautiful children. Which one is going to get ignored, and which one am I going to pick up after school? And it's going to be Baldur's oh Gate Three for one's sure. One's getting full left behind. He's like, I'll pick yeah. your kids up. Yeah, one of you kids up you're... after school. One of you is walking. For me, like, I'm just like, uh, well, at least hope, I want this game to be good, so that ten years later when I play it in VR, it's a good game. Because mm-hmm. I'm not going to be playing it on launch. I'm going to be playing the shit out of Baldur's Gate Three. So rip Bethesda and your your mm. Starfield launch. I much personally, again, I'm in a minority. I think most people are going to play Starfield over Muller's Gate. I mean, I feel like I'm going to have a hard time choosing, but I really want to play both these games real bad. But you're right. I didn't even think about it. That's now all in the same zone uh, of release yeah. time. Well, it, here's the good news for us, Scott. Yeah. As uh, Game Pass subscribers, we don't have to choose. We can buy Baldur's Gate and yeah. we can play starfield for free for nothing actually yeah. scott owns Baldur's gate 3 i do I but Baldur's gate 3 oh that's true yeah bo gifted yeah. it to me for a, for a christmas present one year uh yeah. one of these pre, uh early access like years. years ago here's here's your half assembled gift yeah. <laughs> here's early access, well, in a few scott, years enjoy. you know yeah. it's, fine. it's like that year my mom bought me a. She, she i was in high school she got me an airbrush because i really wanted to do airbrush art so she brought me bought me the airbrush but not the compressor this isn't a, obviously a straight across comparison because Bo Bo can't control when a game comes out or not, whether it's finished or not. But but in my mom's case, she gave me it was like giving me a car with no tires or with an engine missing. I'm like, mom, oh. I can't airbrush without a compressor. It's literally part of the thing. Wow, that part was too expensive. I'm like, well, okay. 
But what, how am I supposed to do it's this? It's not that counts, you agree. Thanks, I'll assemble this slowly <laughs> over a period of time. It's like the um, it's like the original Star Wars toys, where you didn't buy the toys, you bought the box, and then they sent you the toys to fill it yeah. slowly over time. Yeah. It's like, I'm sorry, kids, no Star Wars toys under the Christmas tree, but here's a box, yeah. and eventually there will be action figures that fill it. Sure, yeah, it happens. But I Okay, so to, to sum this up, I think... It's fine to delay it, spend the time you need, get the game in the position you want it to be in before you yeah. launch the damn thing. Agree. In yes. June, they'll show us more. In June, that may be the time to sell John. I think that they want... I think... Yeah. I'm go ahead. Sorry. No, I don't mean ahead. to interrupt. I'm just very excitable today. So just tell me if I'm interrupting. No, go for much. it. Go for it. Where are you? But um, I think if there's someone from Bethesda listening or Todd himself, like, get, send out John an invite. Let's get him over. Where are they located? To uh, Bethesda, USA, uh, wherever that is. I think they're in. And let's get him an invite. So Bethesda, get his USA. Reaction, you know, NDA. He doesn't have to disclose anything. But let, <laughs> like, I think he's perfect. He he's been you know talking games for over a decade now. He has a firm, strong opinion on what's bad for Bethesda games. I think he's a good. He'll be. He would be a good barometer to help you. All right. Gauge let's your, make it happen. Game. Uh, real quick, yeah. I don't tell I him, mean, Phil. You guys need a win on Game Pass. I don't think Game yeah. Pass oh, has Phil's had listening. A killer app yet? So I think Phil has Todd's number. We know Phil Spencer listens. So if Ro- Phil, if you could call, Todd yeah, Phil will get it done. Get he done listens to us. We've, Not all of us, just John. Yeah. I think John's best suited for this. We've learned that he what listens. Also, uh, Wizards of the Coast clearly listens because they keep stealing Bo's DM ideas. Um, so, yeah. yep. and uh, then uh, <laughs> when we accuse him of it totally rewriting the gaming license yeah that boy did little did we know the kind of trouble we were going to cause uh, by yeah. throwing that stink real quick here uh the division uh, the bethesda division of microsoft uh now but when they're even when they were on their own they're located in rockville maryland uh bethesda maryland's a different is there actually a city called bethesda there is right yeah there yeah. is a bethesda but i don't think bethesda's in bethesda Oh, yeah, you're right. Bethesda, Maryland is a city in Maryland, but Bethesda, the company, is in Rockville. Boy, What's they really the name Bethesda? screwed that one up. They really bethesda that. What if they were Rockville? That was the name of the developer. We've been calling them Bethesda all this time. You fine with that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what else can we say about this? Oh, on June 11th, uh, you'll get to see the showcase, and, and then John will be convinced. And then after that, uh, they're going to de- release the damn thing. Um, they were trying last year to do the 11, 11, 22 thing. It's yeah. a real bummer. They missed that. They even had it in the in-game engine or in the in-game cinematic. They had that date. <laughs> it's so fancy and everything. And then they blew it and didn't do it. So now like, what is this? Nine, six, 23. That's yeah, a shit really day. Bethesda did that too. <laughs> oh my God. John's <laughs> relentless tonight. He is relentless. <laughs> Uh, well, anyway, uh, for those who are excited about that game, you'll still get it. Just got to wait a little longer. Let's get to this. Time for a patron question that I think is uh, one fun to riff on for us. This is from Jared York, who says, What games would you consider your comfort games, the ones you always come back to? You're chilling at the house, and you don't know what to play, so you default to what game? John, what game do you oh, just... Man. I mean, I think I know the answer to this, but... Let's see if I mean, see yeah, if I would play a lot of Final Fantasy fourteen, and I yeah. don't feel like I have to. It's not like the old WoW days of chores. It's it's more of a want to. Um, what <laughs> do I do for like a, a casual, like nice experience though? I don't know, Scott. Do you have one? Because I'm I'm gonna cheat. I'm gonna pull up my Steam profile and see what I have the most hours in, and I think that will probably help tell. That'll me. probably tell you for me. Oh yeah, actually that. It's not a bad example. What is it? Uh, my all of these games, I feel like apply to me. Uh, Final Fantasy XIV is my most uh, time spent. No yeah, Man's so Sky good. is mm-hmm. another great game to just chill and relax in. I love that game for that. Yeah. Uh, Elder Scrolls Skyrim, mm. um, the Bethesda game they did. Oh, oh, you played mm. a lot um, of that. That's mm. your third highest yeah, game. Yeah, wow. Guess what? I don't hate all their games. I just think Starfield looks bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So sure, wait, but that's sure. a lot, uh, a lot of time in there. All right, what else? Yeah. Um, Dragon Age Origins. Uh, you know the good Dragon Age that's yeah. there. Yeah. Assassin's Creed Odyssey definitely. Uh, like it's a window. I don't constantly go back to it, but when I've 
installed it and play it, it's one that I go back to frequently. So I think that one's really If I had too. a single one for me, it would be... The problem is it's not currently available on a platform without me getting hyper illegal about it, but I, I, I'm I always down to play uh, Wind Waker, The Legend of Zelda yeah. Wind Waker. Yeah, Wind Waker. doesn't good. matter what I'm doing or thinking. If I need to chill out, that's a game I think of. Like, I just want to go back into that world. I don't want to break my Wii U out where I do have a copy of it. So I would rather, I would really like it if Nintendo ported that to the Switch. Um, I know there are ways to play it. I play it on my freaking Steam Deck and all that. But... Um, yeah, there there was a time there, like when I had the GameCube still hooked up, even though we had moved on to a new generation of consoles, the the 360 PS3 era, I still would fire up the the GameCube and play Wind Waker. I love that game. Oh, so Civilization would be a good answer. Civ's too. a good one. Like it's not showing up as one game because I do this with whatever the current Civ game is, yeah. uh, and have been basically doing it since Civ Three. Yeah. That is a fantastic, just relax and chill game. Yeah, that's a good one. Another one for me, uh, if we're looking at like of all time, that just changes because Diablo Three counts as this for me. Yeah, um, but it's like it's like he sort of worded it like games you always come back to. So you're gonna play and relax to a lot of games, but like, yeah, what's a game you keep like going back to, like like you timelessly? Know, you keep installed that you might play once a month, but it's like, you oh my go gosh, back that's a great question. Just chill, you know. Probably. I mean, we play a lot of games, especially since the show format changed. I would have said it was Planet Side, World of Warcraft, Heroes of the Storm when I was kind of a one game gamer you know that's your comfort <laughs> game and then you explore occasionally these days we play so many games it's hard to know what the recurring habits are but i i can list mine out because i've had more time to think since i was i'm last up to answer um <laughs> <laughs> i always go back to hades like i, I might not play oh, but then i'm hades like i'm gonna go good. back to hades i love hades and the other one is dyson sphere program mm. i always i find myself when i'm like between games and i'm like you know what's going on in my galaxies i think i should go check in and, and those are my two like always installed and will never uninstall games um i think that. i play chrono trigger like once at least every couple years yeah that's a good example. that's a good one that's an old one that yeah. means you've spanned a ch ton of time with it that's, and you play over and over again. You've played it, but you're like, yeah. I just want to play this again. Comfort yeah. game, right? Like, yeah. you know. Because my brain, it's all the recent stuff. You mentioned um, Hades. I think of Dead Cells that way. I can pick that up and play it just about any time, and now there's new stuff yeah. for it, so I am actually doing that again. Um, there, there are little examples like that. If I had to go like way back, though, probably Super Mario Brothers, Super Mario Brothers World. Super Mario World. Why am I saying brothers? Super Mario World for the SNES. I will still play that just about any time you put it in front of me. If I have a reason, you know, some some device to play it on. So I don't know. Yeah, it yeah. depends. Yeah, a game you always go back to. Yeah, it could yeah. be on your console and stuff too. You know, sure. just whatever you're like. Somebody uh, in the chat said, "Wow, I think Heroes is like that for me too." I log into Heroes every now and then and still grab some games. Yeah, I mean, I have nothing but fond feelings for that. Someone in the chat, Lucky Bolt in the chat, said, "Wow," which I agree. Wow can be what this for people. He says. Yeah. Wow, but just standing in town spamming the anal chat circa 2012? Yeah, I've done some anal chat. What is anal <laughs> chat? You don't know what anal chat is? No! I did a, no. I did a 16 year podcast. I played Scott, so much well, and chat? apparently I've never done this. John hasn't either. What is anal so chat? Well, anal chat is when you hang out in trade chat <laughs> or in, in city chat, like trade chat. And you basically go oh, through your talents. I have, yep. Hold and, on. and like, I take it you, you back. click your, you know, you shift click it to put the talent in chat. Yeah. And yeah. you write anal in front of it. So, like, you might have an ability called jab. So, you just write anal jab. And then hundreds of people just take their abilities, write anal and an item name or an ability and do this. And I am ashamed to admit that I partook in anal chat for, you know, longer than is, there's a, there's everything else in the world to do, but somehow seeing like anal, uh, what's another ability like uh, anal colossus? <laughs> you know, like, oh my gosh! I'm so laughing this, now. I can't help so it. So this like, is like the anal, in, it's like the anal bed. flash heel. Yeah, it's anal the, whirlwind. It's the, the chat room's go nuts. Anal of anal sap. It's anal the in bed vanish. thing. It's the in bed thing. That's that. It's that same idea. With yeah, some yeah, anal you shift, you shift like uh, yeah, anal yeah. heroism. You anal shadow step. No. Anal whirlwind. <laughs> 
I'd never heard of this. This is yeah, news I, to me. Yeah, I have done this. I think I blocked it. And <laughs> anal I did, volley. Well, <laughs> can't do anal volley anymore. I, my favorite ability taken out of the game. No more anal volley for us for us hunters. Um, yeah, so it's been a while since I played, so I can't remember all the names, but, you know, anal bloodthirst. <laughs> <laughs> anal gouge. Anal gouge is pretty fury good. fury warrior ability, anal bloodthirst. Yeah. 16 years of doing the instance. Never once heard of anal chat. You never talked about anal chat? You've mentioned a lot of things. Like, obviously, you've played the game, but uh, you probably, you know, didn't spend that much time. I don't remember this ever so. coming up. If it did... I'd have to be reminded with an episode or a clip or something. I don't remember this at all. To be fair, I don't think I know this from Trade Chat because usually leaving Trade Chat is the first thing I do when I log into WoW if I have somehow wound up back in it. But yeah. I'm sure it was something that uh, yeah. got said in Guild or in a party or somewhere because I have certainly done it. Well, yeah, and chat room is playing anal chat right now. There's so much anal yeah. going on in the chat room. Yeah. yeah. Well, good. Uh, thank you, Lucky Bolt, for reintroducing me or introducing me to such a great concept. Um, Redago in the chat says Volley's still in the game. No, it's just in it's in classic. It's not in the main game. It's not in the modern game. If Volley was in should there, I play, I'd use should it. I play World of Warcraft? I don't know. Did they put it back in, Scott? I mean, I played for the last six months and i didn't ever see that option anywhere talents or otherwise mm -hmm. like volley ain't there man they have other stuff but volley ain't there is it someone's saying no bow no dragon no what i said i was saying something about should i play some dragon oh oh oh, oh, oh yeah I'm kind of no been, nah. i've been kind of wow curious <laughs> and I was like, really you guys think you guys are enjoying no, the world it's of great i had a great time in there i don't know i'm i'm kind of like at a place where i'm done everything that i feel like doing up to this point but i enjoyed the hell out of my the last six months i really did so i mean just, i just i kind of miss mmo gameplay you know this is how bad it's gotten black desert ended up back in my oh library. shit oh boy and that's only because i want they, they released the, some on, new classes I it back. yes go play wow <laughs> <laughs> help, you, help yourself i didn't know i, know I, I didn't in. know that telling you don't do wow was gonna put you in black desert hold oh. up i logged wow, in please. but i logged back out but like i love the combat in black desert even more than wow like they, those trailers they put out that are just drums and all the crazy ass abilities it just mm -hmm. looks so cool i well i realized my mistake um in my opinion, there's only one hunter spec, and it's called Beastmaster. The other two are stupid, and when you do anal, them, anal Beastmaster. And I don't even oh, care. So they gave it. They gave it to a different spec. They gave it to yes. Eventually, one at one point, it was gone from everybody. Apparently, Marksman has it now as a talent spec, talented spec, so you can choose it. I did not know that because no other specs exist besides Beastmaster, because Beastmaster rules. Why else would you play a hunter? It's all about controlling a whole bunch of animals, doing weird animal shit. I did. I, I, when I played a little bit of the hunter, I played the class where you don't have a pet because um, I was a night elf yeah. and, and I was a night elf, and you could do you, you do like a front flip, and I wanted to shoot the gun while front flipping. <laughs> and it's not really an ability; it doesn't add to your DPS. But I was like, but I can jump and then shoot. And that was the extent of my hunter. Uh, I mean, yeah. that and that would have been part of the marksman spec, and it, it's called Lone Wolf, and that's fine. And there's nothing wrong with with those specs, especially if they're dominant in DPS when it comes to raiding, and you need that for your team, and so you force your hunters to be this horrible spec. It's fine with me, but you I refuse. Fine with it. I refuse to do it. And survival, even worse. They make you basically you feel like a janitor. You're just like sweeping. You're sweeping up next to the the, the bear, just going, oh, hey, no, hey, Mr. bear. Corchor, let's be careful. No, that's true. I don't want to. But you, yeah, you're saying it's boring because you're just sweeping? BM, the dude. idea of Scott having BM. to do his own work and not having an animal do it for him is just absolutely <laughs> ridiculous. I just like the fantasy of these. I've got two, I've got two identical Henrys fighting for me. Uh, or sometimes Doug, if I'm out soloing. Do you have lore for this? Did Henry, like, split? No, it's did Dark Henry. By... It's Henry when and Dark you went, Henry. Did you get another Henry when you went to uh, Draenor? There was an alternate reality Henry, and you brought him through, and now you have two Henrys? You're close. It's it's actually... So there's Henry, who's been there since Stranglethorn Vale, although he's the yeah. new... He is the... He's the... Um, um, uh, what okay, the the Pandaria version of the the new models right, they made for tigers, model, yeah. Come on, Henry, still a tiger, still it. a Bengal tiger. Yeah. Uh, so so Henry on the left and on the right, I have Dark Henry, who is like this exact same model, almost the same cat, except he's kind of like dark, dark colors, like dark purples, and he's got glowy eyes. And there is a whole story about how his soul was ripped from 
from uh, Henry's body and 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 created as a second entity, and now they fight together. A whole, I have a whole backstory about that. Which one do you like better? Well, I like original Henry the best. I mean, okay, because he's Henry. Dark but, Henry knows. Yeah. this is maybe where his darkness comes from. Is he knows no matter how good he is, he'll never please his master. That's right. And then when I do, I have another identical looking Henry model that I put at the top of my. Um, who's the guy? The Sable Master. And so when I use Stampede, uh, or no, not Stampede, whatever the other one is. Anyway, I, I forget how it works, but I can make it so that everything that ever gets launched to these people is whatever I want. And in this case right now, it's just nothing but Henry's. Um, or Doug. Doug is this bear. And I have two Dugs. <laughs> and then a whole bunch of Dugs in the thing so that when when I'm pooping out a bunch of animal fight, you know, procking a bunch of stuff to do with animal stuff, it's all it's all Dugs or Henry's. It's fantastic. It's the way to play the game. What is the other modes? Oh, it's, uh, I can be Lone Wolf. Look at me with a gun and a stick. And that's me. Hello. I'm a cool hunter. No, you're not. You don't have any pets. I, mean, I can't relate. I play a Fury Warrior. I don't yeah, I was going to say, you lost the right to call yourself cool as soon as you chose Hunter. <laughs> <laughs> I've been taking that shit for 16 years. I, I washes right off my back. It's Ke it's Te it's Kevlar now. It doesn't bother me at all. I used to get oh, so much shit. There's a lot of hate there. for hunters for sure. Yeah. Yeah, but mine's earned because I played a rogue and I played a rogue in vanilla and I remember the days of hunters going. I know it's leather, but it's my stats, so it's hunter loot. I had to deal with, oh, but it's hunter. Yeah, loot. see, and, I don't blame you, you know, guys. They deserve it. They yeah. also tagged mobs a lot too with their pets when you're like a non-pet wielder. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying all hunters, but you would. Yeah. You yeah. Go, before you know, they, I have to manually walk up to things because they don't have any movement abilities right. yet, and then the hunter just like tags, and you don't get the XP. You had your gun slot for a while. Remember that? You had to equip a gun, and then. Yeah, yeah. I love my gun slot. That's how yeah. I do pulls, and then they got rid of it, and I was like. Well, they got other poles now. You got like a... I know, but it's it's just it's a bad at like for me sometimes in the game it's not about is the ability to do damage, you know. It's just is it cool? So I like when I'm doing poles in traditional dungeon. Let me shoot them and piss them off. I just mm -hmm. I was you know, I was mad. Uh, <laughs> I was like I like shooting my gun. Mm. As a you know one one mm. of the greatest things is how Blizzard got rogues to get revenge on hunters for all that hunter loot. No. Well, you know hunters for ages have been asking for pistols as weapons like i can oh. shoot a gun i can shoot a bow what if i had a pistol rogues got pistols yeah so. yeah but oh, they're not awesome. like you're sitting there shooting with your pistol it's like a one ability you can thing, shoot right? pretty frequently yeah but it's not like your main dps weapon is it oh hey uh, no it comes out when you proc it's like a big burst all right i'll give you that you it's an indiana jones you do stabby 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 then you pull out a gun and shoot him in the chest it's yeah. pretty cool that's not bad Okay, I'll give good. you that. It's pretty good. Rogues are good in that game. I I, I will give you that. You chose a you chose yeah, a fun so, thing. So glad I got to be on the instant. So what's again. your comfort game? <laughs> comfort what game? Oh, we what's, already what's did your ours. Comfort what, game. Uh, mine. I already did like four, five of them. You yeah. were here for okay. that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> just, just with the new context. Okay. Great. Yeah, yeah. But WoW is one of those. I'll give uh, that, yeah. which is how we got on this discussion. To, and and I think WoW is a good I one. Spent I a think week trying to get a spectral tiger. I think it's what's the one in Wintergrass, but it's hard to get. Uh. Oh right, spectral um, tiger. No, spectral tiger well, was spectral only. Spectral tiger was in the TCG. Yeah, that was a card only off. thing. And I remember I got one of those from. <laughs> oh shit! You know where I got that? Chris. Yeah. No, it wasn't Metzen. <laughs> I didn't know Metzen then. That was way too early. This was. Um, I think this was Kurt Schilling who gave me that card. Oh, oh nice. Yeah. Oh, now I know why you reacted the way. You yeah, did. it's unfortunate how things went there, but. Um, but yeah, like, oh. uh, back when he was normal, he had, he got these cards from, I think he got them from Rob Pardo at the at Blizzard. They were buddies or something. It kind, uh -huh. kind of makes sense now. Anyway, I'm not trying All to right, throw shade well. on everybody, but <laughs> it's just saying. <laughs> anyway, uh, okay, the Spectral think... Tiger was cool. I have it in my thing. Bo, the thing you're talking about, I think was a similar Winter thing. Saber. I Winter think it's a, mount, it's a rare mount or something. That's I it. don't think I got it, but I think I spent a week in Wintergrass during Burning Crusade just trying to farm for it you know yeah. like i did a lot of ridiculous activities in there <laughs> like epic slogs that never resulted in getting the thing what's the other one in um the the plague zone where you go to that plague dungeon lands? there oh, i forget the name of it uh right. oh. plague lands and there's a rare uh there's a rare mount i think in oh there's so the many i forget i don't remember is it dernholm or no dernholm no. dernhold Dernhold, Rathholm, Rathholm, Rath is it Rathholm? Yeah, no, there's a Rathholm. 
Strathholm. Yeah, I think. Are you so. talking about yeah. the, the Rathholm? Blue skeletal yeah, Baron horse? River Deer's mouth. That's it. Yeah, that's the yeah. one. Strathholm. Oh. There you go. Yeah, yeah sorry, it's been a while. No. Strathholm on the dead side. Yeah, got it. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. I, I never, I never got that map, but I ran that thing like so many times. I did that with the the Zandalari. Uh, it was a tiger like Henry. I wanted a, I wanted a mount that looked like my pet. I can't remember that. Strangle, strang, Stranglethorn something. Whatever Never. he was. Never got it. Tried forever. Forever, never, never, never got it. And actually, I don't care now because I got a night saber <clears throat> while I was out just doing randos once and it just dropped and it was some crazy hard to get drop uh, in Battle for Azeroth. But but when I, the reason I don't care that I didn't get to the Zandalari thing or the Stranglethorn thing was because uh, it's the old model of Henry. So they didn't update. So it's still the shitty old like four polygon looking yeah. thing and it's old and dumb so i'm kind of glad i didn't get it but also i went there 500 times or something uh f that that's not comfort at all don't go back and play old things in well WoW. or do i don't care do what you want everybody hope that answers your question there jared and uh hope tr- prison's treating you nice oh not jared not that jared a very different jared what's wrong with me my god I have a- Wow. I have a I have a hair Dude. in my eye. <laughs> Good sorry, lord! Sorry man. about that, Jared. <laughs> my <laughs> goodness! I just like... saw I just saw a documentary about Jared, uh, the guy from Subway. Subway. Jared, yeah, Jared Subway. I think his last name is Subway. Yeah, that guy is. Uh, whew, there was some shit that he did. It was bad. It was like early days of computers, and he had gigs of like child porn. Yeah. He gigs was, he, in he a time where gigs were not achievable for mm-hmm. people like yeah. he's he's bad and he deserves to be in jail which he's, i think he still is he's he still be. still in prison yeah good i think he's there for the foreseeable and i heard and the, anyway this documentary I, I don't know if i recommend it it's, it's a little Netflix? rough no it's on um hbo no it was a weird network um hold on jared doc where did i see this I had a credit there, a, a free thing. Here it is. Jared Fogel. Here it is. Jared from Subway, it's called. And what was it? It was a, it was a weird name of a site that I had to use. Um, oh, Jared from Subway, from catching, Subway a monster. catching a monster. Yeah. Uh, where is it showing? Oh, Discovery Plus. That's what it was. Oh. Which is owned by Warner Brothers, which is supposedly rolling into HBO Max, so it may roll into there. I don't know. Uh Anyway, I don't know if I recommend it. I'm surprised Subway no, survived. It seems uncomfortable. Yeah, it's very uncomfortable, to say the least. And it's not really Subway's fault. They, they, although the documentary makes a decent argument that maybe they knew some stuff earlier than they could have said something. How does uh, how does a guy like that become a mascot for a fast food chain? Like McDonald's out here has to get like Ronald McDonald. That's because he was fat, he was huge and fat, and he lost 180 pounds, and he claims it's because he ate Subway every day. That was all it took. Well, I think it, the reality was because he was walking there, right? Yeah. Like he actually exercised. Right. <laughs> right. It's what, like... what it actually was, but Subway was like, we can turn this into our sandwiches is what did it. Yeah. So there's... Yeah. There... Weren't they like, we know that's not true. Let's hire him anyway. Like, like It does like, seem weird. The way it was sold was like, yeah, yeah, like we, we can validate this. Yeah. At one point, he was worth over $12 million. He made a ton of money from this. And he spent all that money on hard drives <laughs> and a dirty, horrible life that uh, wow. ended, up, ended up putting him in jail. And I don't know. I've been to Subway in a while. I wonder how, I don't know how it's going there. I have no idea. I mean, all they I changed is... their entire menu at one point recently. So probably not good. Did they really? They were. Yeah. Cl- they were classified. Their bread was classified as cake in Scotland, I think, or something like that. Oh, I thought it was. They can't uh, actually call it bread. They have to call it cake. Or here, something. here it was controversial because it was made out of uh, yoga mat foam or something. There, there was there was ingredients that that you have in yoga mats <laughs> were in their bread. Is this a bow and urea thing or is this? <laughs> no, it's real. Is this an urea thing? <laughs> Although it may be the same thing where a little urea. Like, is it okay you? to eat the same stuff we R- put right. yoga mats in a subway sandwich? Right. Maybe it's chemistry. Maybe it's fine, Bo, you effing idiot. <laughs> I forgot about that whole thing. But yeah, it sounds gross to me. I don't want to eat yoga mats. <laughs> oh, the Bo urea era was pretty great. That was fun. 
I don't um, want to eat yoga mats. Yeah, you notice how I stopped bringing my science learnings to the show? <laughs> yeah. I haven't had a big... I always end up being wrong. <laughs> haven't had a big science topic from Bo in a while. I wonder what that's about. Weird. All right. Yeah, I'm programming games now. Oh, Screw good. Knowledge. Well, let's find out what we played. We did not play any shared games this week. However, Scott got some chore core on and had a great time doing it. I'm going to oh, tell you about a little game called yeah. Contraband Police. Contraband Police. See if I, I can find some title. some gameplay of this on video so people can see it. Um, I played. Uh, uh, you can see, find this on my own YouTube channel. Oh, in fact, I'll just play that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Here it is. So um, you're going to see some driving here, which is not the point of the game. The point of the game is uh, imagine, if you will, the uh, papers please, but in first person. Okay. Okay. Which may sound a little strange. Uh, and it is a little strange, but it's papers, please, in a first person mode, quite literally. Um, you you are at a border crossing of a fictitious uh, Eastern European country of, of no actual oh, real boy. name. Look at this guy. Yeah, look at this guy smoking and stuff. Um, Litzka. You, you work at the border there and cars come through and you have to check their papers and you have to compare... All, the stuff you did in Papers, Please is exactly there. Like, I need to look at your photo and compare it to your actual face. I need to make sure your uh, your document numbers match. I need to make sure it's not expired and it compares to today's date. It even has linking buttons so you can compare the two and have it say, eh, and, you know, mismatch or whatever. So if you play that game at all, that that very basic kind of gameplay is immediately in this game. There's a whole bunch more on top of it, which I'll get to in a second. But... What I like about the approach here is when a car pulls over the uh, pulls over the the line for the crossing, um, you they roll down their window. You talk to them. You ask them for their papers. They give you your papers, and you go through it and you do that usual check. But the other thing you're going to want to do, especially with cargo uh, trucks, is you go through the stuff they're carrying and make sure it matches the manifesto that they have with them. Or not manifesto. What's that called? Uh, Man just manifest. manifest is what I meant. Yeah. So manifesto is very different. Um, <laughs> Add an O to the end. Manifesto is what they really want to tell you. But anyway, you go through all their sh their shit, and sometimes you can't see it all. So you'll open the back gate, and you're kind of looking around. And you have a clipboard. You hold it up, and when you you mouse over stuff and hold down mouse button, your your in game hand writes stuff on the board. Like okay, I'm counting one refrigerator. I'm counting a pile of coal. I'm counting a pig, or you know whatever's in their car, and then you compare it to what their manifest says. And if it's off, you can't let them in. And that of course pisses them off. Um, so they have a lot of extra detective -y stuff going on around the car. You also can take a, per a black light and look at the car. It's more purple. Is why I almost said purple. And when you look at all the details of the car up close, once in a while, you'll find like a little symbol that means there's contraband in there somewhere. So you can use tools to like pry open, uh, a trunk that won't open normally. Or, um, uh, the guy up in the front in the glove box, he's got drugs in there or guns or something else. And you find this contraband. When that happens, you put that in this vault thing that's near the border and you put them in jail, a little holding cell at the border. All right. Then then you have one of your other guys move the car out of the way and then you're on to the next car. Um, sometimes, oh, this guy, he got killed once just walking across the street. I freaking hate him. Anyway, one guy... Um, pulled up and I thought it was just a normal inspection. I'm going through his stuff and everything's actually matching up. And he, before I can get him to give me his papers, he hits the gas and pulls away. So he's, so he's got something he doesn't want me to know about. So I have to go hop into this little police van. That's mine. And I have to chase down this perp and stop him and get him arrested. And this is where I, Went from, oh, man, this is great. I love 3D papers, please. This is a really fun loop to, I don't know if this driving stuff's very good. That's, that's Oh, the control issue? Or? It's kind of a, 
Control is not the right word. It's just... Oh, I thought you were about to have a moral quandary. You're like, no, the driving no. sucks. No, 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 no. <laughs> not like that. You're like, like oh, I'd hate to live in a, uh, a dystopic uh, <laughs> fascist state. That... I mean, that that stuff, too, is a little rough. But I know what I'm in for there. And they, and they yeah, handle, that's they, part of the fun. Yeah, yeah, it is part of the fun. It, you're also... You know, it, you're, when, when this stuff gets too real, it can get kind of like, oh, you know. That's yeah. All. And it never does that, really. It doesn't ever feel like I'm in a, a game that's... Just, pushing that boundary but like you're not you're not separating a children from their parents and making the child child go to work camp or something like no that. none of that in fact so far all of the scenarios in papers please are worse than this one and that that thing's barely graphical you know it's like yeah. this this is more this has just been a little more chiller on the surface and everyone who's bad is just bad but it's anyway, a little bit papers please a little bit gas station simulator is sort yes of getting. <laughs> if that's the vibe you're getting that's exactly what you should be getting because that is what it feels like i wouldn't be surprised if this is if not the same company, people like them who are making a lot of these chore cores. So they've lifted, obviously lifted a lot from Papers, Please, which I think is a classic and amazing game. And they've added this stuff where I take like prisoners to a labor camp and you dump them off and the labor camp guy says, thanks. And you get money for this and you go back and then you do more border patrol. But I think the driving stuff, whether you're chasing a perp or taking people to be dropped off at the labor camp or the police place or whatever, just disrupts gameplay so it's not the control it's just it's like oh okay now we're doing this and this is a very different thing that we're doing and sometimes it takes a little long and the map doesn't have an auto map you have to keep pulling the map up to know where your destination is and it's a lot more manual and it that stuff just doesn't isn't as fun as the loop of being a detective at the border seeing if people are bringing weird shit into the country they're not supposed to or if they're not who they say they are or you know, all that intrigue is actually really fun to deal with. But this navigating around this map, finding the location you need, driving there, the car's a little wonky. Um, it just doesn't feel, it feels like it's a second game, a different game. Yeah, especially yeah, because like if you were a person of note, you'd have underlings probably do that stuff for you. Yeah, and I think as the game goes on, I think I get those. So I, I, I should mention that I'm, I think I'm three hours in. I think I can unlock that so other workers can do these things for me. But I think even at a base level, it's the kind of thing in the game where I would rather have, you know, Dimitri, I kept calling him, this guy in my camp over there that's just standing around smoking. That's all he does. I would like that guy to, to do it, to take care of it, get in the car and take care of it. <laughs> like, it's not a big deal. But instead, they make me do it, which makes no sense because they're not actually checking at the border. I'm the only border agent. So you could have mashed this up with an RTS, maybe like a little bit of first person with like RTS management. Yeah. Like, yeah. Or even yeah, just like, hey, send working. them on a, on an errand and they do the errand and then they come back and enough time passes. Like when you, when, you know, in Warcraft or uh, uh, Knights of the Old Republic MMO, you have what were they called? Companions or whatever that would go do jobs yeah. for you while you're online, offline, didn't matter. That That's an easy mechanic to implement. I don't know why they didn't because... I know why they didn't. They also have mechanics in here to fix the car, upgrade the car, get a better engine, have it hold together more and less cost for repairs because you do wipe out a lot. It's super goofy the way it drives. And if you slam into a tree, you'll break the window and now it's going to cost you money to get it fixed. So they're they're trying to add more gameplay there. I just don't know if it fits in the same game. So it's really the only complaint I have. And maybe it tightens up later. So I don't want, you know, I want to give it a benefit of the doubt, as we, oh. as they say. Um, my doubt is a benefit to you there you go and uh we'll see uh because i'm gonna keep playing it i i really think the stuff at the border is legit fun and it's fun to like um f f oh, this is the part where i got so wedged in here i couldn't actually it's get funny it what it decides <laughs> that it needs to be realistic because the fence opened without you having to, like i've been in a few places where you got to open fences yeah you have to park your car in front <laughs> yeah. of the fence yeah get out unlock the fence lift the damn fence doors open yeah. then drive in stop get out close the fence uh, yeah so yeah I mean, you know, these all have auto fences with... yeah yeah and you're totally right and the game and and the game has other things like that like when i need to transfer a a, a, a prisoner when i do it he's all in stripes like stereotype like prison stripes in my little holding cell and i walk up to him and i hit the right button to have him you know go and you'd think it would be like oh grab him and take him to the van he poofs in a, a literal poof of smoke. He goes, poof, <laughs> and then he's in the van. So they do, oh, they yeah. hand wave a lot. And then there are other places where they're like really sticklers about what the simulation is. 
And I, I'm not sure the balance is just right yet, but um, overall, I think it's really a good to, time. It, it looks like those trying to be like a quasi Skyrim RPG. You know, everyone seems to have names. There seems to be NPCs. Is this full release or early access? Full release soon. I think it is. I think I have an early code. Um, they said I could talk about it, but it's a, yeah. Because like it's like you know you could have. I mean, maybe the game does have it as you go along. You you know, Vlad here maybe. He's just a gun salesman, but you find out he escaped uh, his country because they wanted him dead, and now he's here. And you know, it's not much better here, but he's willing to drink the Kool Aid and praise the mother, like whatever it is. You there know, is like, de- there is definitely um, story to it, and yeah, Vlad, yeah, that's, Vlad's maybe, part. So of it. maybe you haven't how long? How many hours have you played so far? Just three. So it's not yeah, a lot. Yeah. So maybe there's stuff to uncover story wise. You know? Yeah, I'm gonna um, keep at it. I I really do like it. Um, I just I'm just getting that feeling early on that the car stuff just feels like it belongs somewhere else but but it's um it's a fun chore core in the sense that you know doing basic, basically doing detective work every time a car pulls up is just fun it's like all right I got my kit I'm going to look I got my flashlight all right he doesn't have any contraband but that doesn't mean his papers are current so I'm checking those and oh your last name's not the same get out of here and they always go what is this this is bullshit and then he'll pull out and leave and then I get money, or if I effed up, I lose money. And if I lose enough money, I just get thrown in prison. Do they do they bribe you to? Uh, what, oh, there's a bunch of that. Bribes? Yeah, there's there's bribe mechanics. I can buy cigarettes off a guy who's selling. Like he's he's hawking cigarettes, so he might go. Hey, you're looking for. It's all done in a language I don't know. I don't know if it's real. It sounds like Russian, and it's subtitles at the bottom. But there'll be somebody who's like, hey, let's make a little trade, and so I could trade him, or I could buy his cigarettes and then sell him something he needs. And we're doing that on the on the low. Nobody's supposed to know about that. So there's a little there's stuff like that. You um, know what would make that game as like I don't know expansion or a sequel or something like some multiplayer. I'd love to do this activity with you. I think mm-hmm. and having John there would be oh great co-op too, would be so. a blast. Yeah. yeah, where everybody can do their own little job. Like somebody is the person mm-hmm. who chases down the criminals in the car that that break through, and yeah. somebody checks passports, and somebody does the physical searches with the flashlight and all that. I think that would be awesome, actually. It would be. You're totally right. Um, and it's there are moral quandaries. There is a guy who his papers were 100% good. His photo 100% matched his face. He seemed nice. His truck was in good shape. He had no contraband of any kind. He just looked like a guy trying to get work done. His, his, his cargo, his manifest said he had four goats. He only had three goats back there. Oh, a thief. And I thought... What happened to the fourth goat? Yeah, is it his fault? Or did someone take one of his goats? Like, I felt bad not letting him over the border because of this stupid... You know, it just but but I was required to. I was going to lose five hundred dollars or whatever the money is. In this. Step out of your car. We have a few questions for you. And you do that. They'll get out of the car. Sometimes, if they're pissed, they'll have a gun and they'll aim it at you and shoot. You take cover and you got to fight back and you have a gun yourself. So there's sometimes things go real south. Um, this is a neat little game though. I think it has potential. And like I say, it's not technically out. It's on Steam. You can go wish list it. I think there's a demo uh, currently, but I think it's coming out soon. And is called Contraband Police. And I had a real good time with it. All right. Everything else I'm going to mention today are known quantities, so I'm going to hurry through these so we can get to some of your stuff. Uh, Factorio. I just started playing it again. Factorio's nice. great. It's because you guys have been talking to, or one of you played it recently. I played it recently. That's right. Yeah. Once again, John. I haven't played it yet. I, I don't know why I'm always too shy to play it, just because I got Dyson. But, man, it looks good. Dude, you'd love Factorio. It's so good. Uh, but the reason, the biggest reason I was planning is because it per- turns out this is another one of those perfect uh, Zoom calls that are going too long, and I can't, you know, I'm kind of bored on the call, so I play this, <laughs> and it's great for that. And plays on a Mac real well, plays on PC. Uh, does not play great on a Steam Deck because Steam Deck it, it's mouse and keyboard only, and that Steam Deck's hard for point and click stuff, so I wouldn't recommend it there. But Factorio continues to be rad. Um, Dead Cells Castlevania DLC dropped. Anybody else try this? Just me. I thought about it. I there's a lot coming out this month, and I'm being very cautious what I spend the money on. So fair. I, I I didn't buy it yet, but I am interested in it. Well, I can tell you that you're probably going to like it if you go into it thinking it's anything other than Dead Cells from a mechanic standpoint. They're lying to you because that is what it's still Dead Cells. So if you already like Dead Cells, you're going to like this. It doesn't play that differently. However. 
um, the way it works is actually just get in there, and as soon as you get in, you notice there's a new note on the floor. You pick it up, and it says, there's some dude in the sewers who wants to talk to you about something. So you go down to the sewers. It's 10 bucks, I should say, to play this. You go down to the sewers just like you normally would, and you run into this dude. I forget who it is. It's probably someone John would say, oh, that's so-and-so, Belmont's brother's uncle, whatever, from an ancient Castlevania game that I don't know. Um, but you talk to that guy, and he tells you you need to take care of some stuff and how to get to this castle. And so you do what he says, and you get there. And now the music is straight up Castlevania music. Yeah. The the look of every there are bats everywhere, hanging lamps everywhere, all the motifs you're used to. Um, the the uh, not succubus the who are the flying ladies with wings? What are they called? <laughs> They're in lots of games. Uh, uh, harpies. Harpies. <laughs> Sorry, harpies. These harpies show up. I can't say words today. Um, and they start attacking you, and they look just like the, the a certain kind of harpy might in a Castlevania game. So a bunch of new monsters, new items. First new item I got was a, the Shield of Alucard. 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 Yeah. yeah. Not the son of Racula. No. <laughs> <laughs> yep, exactly. So I got that. Then I met. Oh, and then he, and then I found Alucard. They don't call him that, but I found him. They get around it all. They say it weird. But he's like, yeah, I'm, oh, I've, I've been dead all this time. Where's my dad? I, we got to kill him. I got to get revenge or whatever. There's a whole story that will be very reminiscent if you're a fan of Castlevania games in some level or not. Anyway, so now I'm on the hunt for Dracula. That's about as far as I got. I streamed a bunch of it, had a really good time with it uh, so far, and I'm going to keep playing it. It it does just feel fun to have new environments, new enemies, and and just it feels like a, kind of a new new game over there so it just really breathes some life into it which i think is the point of this dlc yeah. so 10 bucks is all and talk about a game that runs like insanely good on a steam deck that game's perfect on there so play that um and also really notable for just also being one of the smoothest controlling games of all time too i know it's like, so it's tight it's, it's just, shocking it's like just feels good right yeah they just got they nailed it down to the pixel like everything yeah I love that. Yeah. It's a really, really it's tight I, game. It's what I always remark whenever I boot that one back up. It's just, wow, it controls so good. That's And that's another one I would have answered earlier is like a a, a game I go to for just chilling. You know, my a game I can just step back into any time and enjoy. Uh, then we got Phoenix, uh, or Immortals, Phoenix Rising. I'm still playing that. Nothing more to say other than I am enjoying that quite a lot. And glad I'm re I'm playing it again. I am replaying it. I didn't use the old save. Oh, that is the yeah, one no, complaint. You were, playing, you were playing last time, too, so this is... Uh, Two weeks in a row, I know. Weird, right? This is a long-term... No, it's nice to see. It's great. You know, you play a lot of different games, and there's a lot about that game. Uh, I have it on Xbox. Maybe I should play it. It's real good. Um, I really like it. I like it a lot. And the problem, the problem I had... The only problem I had this week was they added... Uh, crossplay to it very early in the game's uh, release they made it so if you had it on an xbox or a playstation you could also play it on the steam version of the game or the ubisoft version or whatever and i never used it because i only had it there on my series x well now i have it on steam because of that sale recently the 80 percent off sale was stupid cheap so i got it there started the play there and i went you know it'd be fun to also be able to plop on the couch and continue this same save again so i'd in, reinstalled it on the Xbox and it, the game won't launch because it says it has a weird launch services error and I think I ran into some bug with cross save and now I'm annoyed with it oh, it's no. still working fine over here no issues didn't lose anything but I can't launch it on my console anymore and I have a little ticket in with Ubisoft to see what's going on because everything else runs fine it's just that game so something something with cross cross play is effed I don't know I don't know what um and then i streamed a bunch of delver or sorry deliver us the moon it's a walking simulator where you go save everybody from imminent doom by fixing shit that went down on the moon it's about the oh right this one so yeah i was curious about this because it's pretty good it looks good but yeah. it wasn't they just released enough. deliver us man. mars which is a sequel and they do it on mars uh, oh, it's so very you're playing the prequel yeah well the, yeah the first game but it's very oh, it's very pretty game. it's very atmospheric uh unreal engine you know ray tracing all that stuff it looks very nice so i've been playing that 
on stream, but I I only got like two hours into that, so I don't have a ton to say except it's you so know it is, is what like it is. Like an adventure puzzle game, like it's not a shooter, right? Like it's... no, although you have you know you have a laser cutter to open up locks for certain parts of the game. You have um, boosters while you're in zero gravity, like you have mechanics, but mostly it's a story and mostly it's like an interactive adventure game with more than just clicking. It's it's kind of that. Looks um, good actually. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. I like it a lot. And it's short, uh, people say. I think I'm probably f two of five hours in or something like that. I think it goes maybe five, six. It was in my library forever. I forgot any more I got it. But I thought, you know what? Let's play it and see what's up. And then Carter and I are probably having uh, our last um, uh, session tomorrow of Dead Space Remake. I think that will finish it for us. I think we'll be done. Yeah, I was going to say, I knew you were getting close to the end. So. Yeah, very close. I think tomorrow will be it. I think I think we're doing it tomorrow. It might be Saturday, but we're recording that and uh, streaming it. And I and we're on we're on chapter twelve, which is the final chapter. Oh, so you've had uh, you've had a few encounters with vagina face. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. I it's like vagina face. Really, something with the increased graphics. Yeah. <laughs> it looks a lot better than the original. It's like oh yeah, that game that game's had a few moments of like oh my gosh, what am I even looking at here? Like surprise me because I don't remember the first one or the second one even having that much stuff, but. Yeah, really liked my time in there so far, and uh, getting a lot of scares, or you're getting used to it because it gets to a certain point where you're pretty tough in that game. So yeah, I'm kind of decked out. I also have regen healing on because I'm a puss, um, and <laughs> and also yeah, you're, you're I'm a little less surprised when a big lanky one will come out of nowhere because I'll be like, oh, of course you do. You're always doing this every time I walk in here. So bam, 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 take your legs off, shoot you in the head, and you're dead. But every once in a while. They'll get me <laughs> with something. <laughs> you know what gets me is the damn uh, communications video when someone's trying to contact oh. me. It scares the yeah. shit and out of so me. so loud. Like, who invented their communication system in yeah. this world? It goes, <laughs> and you're like, oh, shit. It's freaking it's not like Zoom or Discord do that. You don't get on Discord. Discord's like, <laughs> and yeah. then starts. It's like, come on. It's yeah, really... but it would have been a very different atmosphere if every time they called Isaac, it's boop, boop. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> little dancey one that'd be great hi isaac uh yeah <laughs> anyway that game's great i have a lot of fun with it i like that they added they finally added a way when you change your skin it, it was kind of a pain because if you got the suit upgrade and you went to do the suit upgrade you'd lose the skin you had equipped because you'd go in and come out with your new armor and it would go back to the normal thing and i know john's like oh if you're gonna play the game you gotta wear the thing in the game but i like I those mean, me skins. too because then you get the upgrade and it's it's worth something. It means something. Yeah, it I actually agree with how this was designed. Like you got the upgrade, you need you need to see what they did. You're you not wrong. You're not wrong. That you got an upgrade. It's just a pain because to go put it back was a whole ordeal. Um, yeah, now a you whole can. Scene too. Yeah, now you can. Yeah, I think you can toggle it. You can basically say, "Yeah, I'd like to have it stay or not." So, I like when they do stuff like that. Anyway, that game has been great. I think that a Dead Space Two remake would. I would definitely play that. So. I'm not going to play the old one, but I'll play the new one if they remake it. Uh, John, let's talk about... We never talk about peripherals here, so I'm excited about this. What is this? Yeah, I got a new peripheral. Um, I was talking a, a little while back about... Uh, reminiscing about the old days where I used to have, um, back when I lived at home with my parents... Uh, I had this amazing sound system for my PC setup that, you know, tons of bass... If a, if a song or a game with a lot of bass came on, things would fall off the walls. It was amazing. I loved it. The set of Logitech surround sound speakers that I probably spent too much money because I was a dumb kid and didn't have any financial responsibilities <laughs> on. Yeah. And um, I, I was kind of lamenting that, you know, now I live in a house. I don't have to be courteous to my neighbors, which is why I got rid of that those speakers, that I don't have anything like that. And I was looking, and I was like... Man, there's like people don't seem to make good PC speakers anymore. And I realized it's because everybody is supposed to be playing with headphones. Yeah. And and like if you look at where the money is, that's where everybody's investing. Everybody's got THX certified headphones, surround 3D sound headphones, 7.1 headphones. And I, I don't know if it's because oh, I'm I, I don't know if it's because I am a a like new father. I gotta keep an ear out for the baby. If I've just always been this way, I hate having stuff over my ears that cancels out noise around me mm -hmm. when I'm playing games. I don't like so it I don't either. like yeah. I don't like headphones. 
Yeah. And so it's like Final a Fantasy for your as a Final yeah. Fantasy player. Uh this oh, product right here. Let's see this. What we got? Kept getting recommended player. to me. Okay. And around sound. This is a this is the Sound Slayer. I know why uh, you bought it though. Yeah. Oh, look. <laughs> yeah, look at the right shit that's Final Fantasy this is right on the thing. Yeah. Look, Slayer. they know their audience, okay? Yeah, yeah. All yeah. right. Uh yeah. So what this is, is this is a solution for me, because again, I don't really like having stuff over my ears. I do it for the podcast because my microphone will pipe me back in. Yeah. Um, but outside of podcasts, I don't like having the headphones on. So what this does is it is a, a sound thing that just sits around your neck. Mm-hmm. So you can still hear ambient sounds around you, and it just plays surround sound music right up at your head. And it's not, and, you can control how, I mean, even at low volume, you're still getting a pretty good surrounds experience, right? Like it yeah, sounds good around yeah. your head. Now, I just got it today, so I can't give a full robust review. Oh. Um, but I did immediately pull up a game, start listening, and was like, oh, that's neat. As like, I heard audio all around me. I played Fortnite. I was able to, someone shooting, and I rotated, and I could hear the audio basically travel around my head as it was shooting hmm. and that's neat that's pretty it cool. is not heavy it's not cumbersome um it's it's actually i mean having nothing on your neck is probably <laughs> definitely still preferable but it's not a big like oh my gosh this is so much um i like it i think it's really nice good the sound quality is good Oh, and, yeah, VR. Uh, I didn't even think of that, Bo. VR yeah, would be rad VR. use for this, yeah. Except it's wired, right? So it'd be hard to... Can you Bluetooth? It is, it? I have it wired headphones. Wired, if I but... play PC VR, I have the headphones wired. Anyways. Oh, okay. Okay. So, um, how did, how did pri- you get They the, are pricey. How did you get clear. the Final Fantasy version of it? I, I When I looked for it, I can only find these kind of generic version of it, the Panasonic. Uh, it was on Amazon. Um, it was on sale on Amazon, actually. Uh, although the Final Fantasy version is more expensive because they they know they can get rubes like me the first <laughs> time... spend extra money to have the final fantasy logo on yeah. it this is the first time i've ever seen this product before how long has it been around that's crazy it's been around for a while and that's the thing is like i heard about it because obviously they made a deal with final fantasy 14 it was up in yeah. my business mm-hmm. um I don't know why you're not finding out. There, I don't know either. Oh. That's that's Hor- That's a different brand. Hori makes a pair, I guess. I guess these are a thing. Uh, let me make. Let me make sure I'm saying the right name. Uh, Panasonic Sound Slayer. Yeah. Sound Slayer. Oh, here um, it is. FF14. Let me just do a search for. See, that's not showing up. But all of the other version, the this version of it is here, the hundred and fifty dollar version, which mm. is just the thing. But I don't see the. Maybe they ran out. Maybe they sold out. Yeah. Or maybe they yeah, have Dragon the last Beef. One. I they got the like, last Man, one. The dragons in this game suck. Let's hurry and get rid of these. That's what they said. No, now the dragons sound even better. Oh, you man. Know. I don't know. They look and sound better than ever. I don't know. Dragon uh, Beef. So, it, yeah, it's great. I'm going to continue using it. I'll let you know as I as I continue to, to play with it. But if you're like me, this is definitely aimed at people that are in my same... Oh, there it is. Click the top thing right there, Scott. Yeah, yeah, that's the, the very one. top thing on the results. Yeah, that's the, the one. It just doesn't have. Yeah. There's just not a version with. Uh, well, if you click it, there might be a like select version. Oh. Because uh, Amazon likes to do that. So scroll down. Oh, that and, guy really is enjoying yeah. it. Yeah. Oh no, you're back, 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 back up. Back There's a drop down, drop down menu yeah. right there. You're getting the there delay, but yeah, this is it. So there's the one John got. Yeah, that's cool. Um, and that is oh, it's a little more than the base one. Yeah. Because they know. Cause they you, know so wait a minute. You, 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 pay you paid yeah. more for the... You paid 12 bucks more for this version because of the Final Fantasy branding. I just want to make sure I yeah. have that right. Okay, yeah, pretty no, much. It's yeah. all good. No. When it turns on, it plays the Final Fantasy theme. Does it really? Yeah. <laughs> I yeah, kind of hate that. Yeah, it does, Scott. All right. All right, no, it's hey, they, fine. Yeah, they, they couldn't just sell you uh, some print for Yeah, it's not. Dollars. Look, I'm not going to spend 10 a extra print dollars. Print and a wave file. <laughs> yeah, that's a wave file. Yeah. And art. And, sir. and they got the wave file into the speakers. Yeah. How yeah. do you do that? Yeah. I don't know. Wild. 150 for the major or the regular black one. That seems interesting. Uh, I'm really curious how your time with it will go. Yeah, I'm... I've I've enjoyed it so far. Like I said, it's it's 
comfortable. It it does exactly what I want. Like it's not so loud and overbearing that I can't have a video on my second monitor because that's the other thing that I wondered was you know, if I put on headphones, there's no point in having anything else on unless it's also piping into the headphones competing for audio. But if I have something up on my second screen, can I still hear that over the sound? Will they mesh together? And they do. It works quite well. Mm -hmm. um, so mm -hmm. this really solved my issue of wanting good surround sound, good quality speakers, but also still being able to do second screen experiences, being able to hear the baby if, you know, if he's taking a nap or something um, and he wakes up, still no one to, to go take care of him. It really kind of did everything that I needed it to do. So can you plug a, that into your phone? Uh, probably not. I think it requires a USB for um, for power. It does have a wanna, headphone wanna, adapter, or, but I think you still need to tether to USB to power the device. I want to start cycling, but I don't want to. I don't like having headphones in because I don't hear cars and the surrounding stuff. I'm gonna start biking this year. Um, that would be awesome because then my ear would be free and I can still hear music. Well, so yeah. Another thing that people recommended to me because uh, surprisingly, people were very curious why I wear different headphones for streaming versus podcasting. Yeah. Um, but when I talked about this problem, I guess you can get headphones with an open back so that you get more ambient noise. Oh. Um, they recommended a pair of headphones that made this look cheap. Uh, but I'm sure that they make open back headphones that are not as expensive of, as what was sent to me. Um, so that's uh, that's another that's another option. Well, um, you have me curious for sure. What the, the bone conduction stuff for bikers bow is maybe something to look into too. That's like the weird. Yeah, maybe as well. I it was bone conduction when you just like staple them to your temples. <laughs> like no, it's like down. Here. They go down to your. I think it's these bones behind your ears. I so think. your ears are free to hear everything. Yeah, I don't just need a little bit of ambient. I, you would want to. I'm trying to live, you know. So. Yeah, you want to survive yeah. while you're out there. I I'm pretty sure that's just. I don't know. I don't know what brands are like good bone conduction stuff, but I'm sure someone out there will give us advice. It's worth thinking about because I like listening to podcasts. Yeah. <laughs> Shocker. And <laughs> and, yeah. and you know it just sucks going biking when you're like, man, I have to listen to the wind. Uh. I put yeah, this on my I mean, that's list. where that's where I tend to be too. It's like, oh, Docs great! I'm gonna go out. I'll have a chance to listen to stuff, and then you go, oh wait, I actually need to be able to hear. You know, I'm sure good quality headphones are still probably better than this and still outperform it. But uh, you know, if you're in the same camp as me, and you I just... think you're gonna suffer from VRitis a little bit with it, maybe because like I look at it and I'm like, you know, it looks like uh, airplane. Pillow. Yeah, it looks like I could just looks take like a out. toilet seat yeah. cover. Mm -hmm. You know, why are you wearing a toilet seat cover around your neck? You know, mm -hmm. but it's like it's speakers. Yeah, yeah. On a they podcast. seem awesome. Actually, like <laughs> I feel both ways. I'm like that looks cool, but also I don't know about the fashion. But you're never going to stream or podcast with these. I will say another cool these. thing about the design of it is I was letting my wife try it. Which, by the way, also advance warning: this is a very weirdly specific, and my wife may be unhappy that I'm about to share this. Turns uh -oh. out this rests directly on a spot she is exceptionally ticklish, and she could not wear these headphones oh, for funny. very long. Um, so if you are hyper ticklish on your neck, might not be the headphones for you. Like, but does it the, vibrate a little bit? I think so. I, I don't know. She's super sensitive in that spot. Like, you get around her, and she's just like hands Probably up the base, right? Like, you get, stay away. You get like yeah, a little bass, and it's going to go and get you a little yeah, bit. Yeah, like what if you're watching um, Avatar? You know, in movies, there's like a big scene, and some engine thing comes out and goes and rumbles like when you're in the yeah. theater. You know, I think it probably get... would rumble on your neck. Yeah. 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 It sounds right. It seems like um, a feature to me, but I guess not everyone's cup of cup of Starbucks coffee. But the thing I thought was neat was while she was listening to it, I kept asking her, is it loud enough? And she goes, yeah, it's, it's fine. Because the audio is directed so well towards your ears that I was standing right behind her and I was like, can you hear that? Um, I could faintly tell something was on. It's not like it's dead silent, but she was hearing the audio loud and clear. I was standing, you know, next to her go thinking, you know, I don't know if that's actually on and she's hearing it properly. Mm -hmm. So right. it's not blaringly loud speakers, which is also a nice thing if you game with other people in the room or around you. Um, it's a nice alternative in that regard as well. Nice. So you're never going to stream with these, though. Like they're just gonna. Be, I'll just... probably stream with these. I don't. I don't know if it would get picked up by the microphone. 
Yeah, that's what I would want uh, to test. I'm going to have to test. Yeah. That I haven't tested yet because I haven't streamed yet. But yeah. Podcast probably I weird. I think I could. Other people talking, but game game audio? You're already piping that in, so you'd probably be fine. Hmm. Yeah. Well, uh, I'm actually really curious now. I have to check more about that. Uh, tell me about Tactics player. Ogre Reborn, or if you'd like tacti- Tactics Org. I don't mind saying it. <laughs> Org. Yeah. Uh, tactics Ogre Reborn. I don't have a ton to say because I only spent about an hour with it in, in a tactics game. Spending an hour with it is like saying I watched the intro and that was it. But uh, I did want to give this game a shout out because it is a remake on PC. Um, that the thing that impressed me the most, like it's clearly an older game, um, but the voice acting in it is really good oh really uh as somebody who's been struggling to play final fantasy 10 on a regular basis on the grounds of all the characters sound like dipshits um going back and playing this old game with a bunch of nice voice acting in it is been a really good experience what was it back in the day just like jibber jab or did I, I don't know i know this i think this came out on the n64 so i can't imagine it was nice I thought it was a PS. Voice acting. Not a, I thought it was a PSP game. I'm thinking of something else. Maybe they ported it. It might, it might have been a PlayStation game too. And maybe yeah. it did ha- always have this. I don't know the series very well. Like yeah. this was my first experience with it. Um, there's a lot of names to learn. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of there's a lot of stuff. Uh, they like throw a lot of politics at you right away. So I can't claim to understand much of it. Um, but if you are into tactics games, this feels like a very uh, very good way to play this game. Mm. Um, it seems like a lot of fun. I had a good time with it. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to stick with it because I'm just not... I haven't found a game to stick with just yet. But uh, I did want to give a special shout out to the voice acting. You know, if, you, if you're if you really into these sorts of games and you're like, man, it's just a lot of reading though. Everything I played so far, except for tutorial messages, was voice acted. And even then, there were times where the the other characters were telling me how to do things. And it even that was voice acted. As goofy as it was to have someone in a very serious accent be like, Now, when you go out there to the field of battle, you're going to make sure you press the action button to mm-hmm. face the enemy. It's like, oh boy, <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it's a little bit of that, but I appreciate that it's there. Yeah, I uh, I was always curious about the series in the day. I never played it. I had a PSP version of it for some reason. I had that I had that disc, um, and I didn't play it. And I always just thought, well, this looks like a ripoff of Final Fantasy Tactics. Well, it's a lot of the same devs, right? It's like a yeah. I think it's got a lot of similar DNA. Yeah. Um, I'm still waiting for a Final Fantasy Tactics remaster to come out. Yeah, so I'm so surprised th- that hasn't happened. That's kind of what I played instead. Does that seem weird that that's not a thing yet? That seems nuts to me. It was that's... on that NVIDIA leak as something that's happening, and that NVIDIA leak oh, has proven very true. I missed so that. So yeah. I, I think it will happen, but who knows when. All right, who? what comes first, that or the um, Metal Slug Tactics game that I was so excited about when we first heard about it? What do you think we get first? Wait, that or which one? The metal, metal, the metal, metal slug, slug tactics. One? Yeah, I remember that. Do you remember that? Uh, I do. I want it so bad. Yeah. I hope Metal Slug Tactics. That's what. That's what I really want to play. It's finally wish listable on Steam, but it's. I don't think it's anywhere near being announced, which bums me out. Anyway, uh, nice tactics ogre. Get get in there, uh, especially if you're trying to prep for something like uh, triangle strategy. Is that what it's called? Yeah. So that, yeah. that one, that one is the terrible name, but it's supposed to be very much in this vein. So if you're looking for like a modern, but but like a lot more uh, complex, maybe and even more names to remember and all that stuff. So maybe this is your place to start. And then, yeah, I think the problem I keep running into these games is my first tactics game series was Disgaea, mm-hmm. which really celebrates stupidity and over the topness. Mm. So all of these games end up feeling a little self serious and dry, um, simply because I'm used to a game where you pick up your units and hit each other with them, and that's a vi- a viable tactical strategy. Yeah. And like that sort of insanity, I'm like, yeah. And then you play this and they're like, Sir Knight, make sure you move to the field of battle so that you will be there. And I'm like, oh my God. 
right. where's the penguins with knives i need more penguins with knives that when i throw them they explode uh, um, that's that's, that's what i need yeah. <laughs> so it's not that these games are bad but it's like when you when you started there i think it's easy to understand why tactics ogre and you know, even when I tried Final Fantasy Tactics on the phone, I was like, it's a little dry for, for my taste. They take themselves pretty seriously. Yeah. Um, okay, cool. That's a thing. That's available everywhere. Again, uh, that is called Tactics Ogre Reborn. And then Diablo 3. You, you got sucked in again, did you, there? I did. I, I played Tactics Ogre Reborn for an hour so that I would have something other than Diablo 3 on this list. Mm. Uh, because all I did was play Diablo 3. Oh, uh, you did I, get into it. I thought I saw you online at one point. Nice. Yeah, yeah I, I did. What are you playing? I'm playing a Crusader. No. Nice. Uh, I figured this is likely my last hurrah with Diablo 3. I don't know if I'm ever going to go back to it. Who knows? We'll see how good Diablo 4 is. I do think at this point, though, I'd be more likely to play Diablo 2 Remastered instead of going back to Diablo 3. So I figured for my last hurrah, I'd play the class I enjoyed the most, which was the Crusader. And um, having a really good time with it. I do think I might be done. I've seen it. I haven't maxed out the new altar. I think that there are things I like about the altar. I think there's things I don't like about it. Most of the stuff I don't like about it, I think, is tied to probably having played too much Diablo 3. Yeah. Because it makes sense to me. So the way it works, just to kind of give people some context, and I know Bo talked a little bit about it last week, um, but it's these passive buffs that you can give yourself, and you it's like a talent tree in WoW. You can pick from a bunch of different options, and then those options branch to other options, and you can kind of find your own path through it. Where it gets interesting is that is there's no linear currency for it. So the first time, you might it might just be like, hey, we want some gold. You're like, okay, I'll buy that for gold. But then, regardless of whether you're starting at the top or moving further down the tree, the requirements for the next thing change. And it might be, well, we want this kind of gem. And that kind of gem may not drop until you're in your level 50s or something like that. So it's like the game has now given you homework. It's like, okay, well, you can't do this yet. You got to go grind until you have this. It's not impossible to grind stuff. And I haven't looked at any of it and gone, ugh, this is going to be forever. But I have looked at some of the stuff and gone, well, this is annoying. And it's only really annoying because I've played hundreds and hundreds of hours of Diablo 3. When it's a new experience, it's probably not that bad. Mm. But um, for... For somebody who's played a ton and kind of done this all before, every time they were like, well, now you need a ring of royal grandeur. And you're like, I disenchanted that into my thing. <laughs> now I got to go farm another one. <laughs> okay. Gosh yeah. dang it. I'll go do it. Let me run some more riffs. Let me set this up. And it just, I kept finding it every time I unlocked a new thing, it felt more and more like chores. Um which again, I don't think is necessarily a red flag for Diablo 4, but it, it did make me kind of get sick of it in Diablo 3 fairly quick. This is exactly what I was feeling last week. I was excited, I got in, and I went, oh, I don't know if I can do this again. You did more than I did. And Bo did way more than either of us, but I yeah. just, so many hundreds of hours already. And, and we got four right around the corner, and I don't know. I did think of you this week, though, because I saw... Um, they put up a preview video or something on Twitter, the, the official Diablo account, and they were talking about the rogue. And that rogue looks like it was... A rogue lady looks like it was invented for John Jagger. I can I can guarantee you that is the class I will be playing in the beta. Yeah, for I, sure. I imagine so. Uh, well, anyway, all right, so there you go. Diablo 3, the venerable Diablo 3, still a threat, everybody. Still a threat. It's not much of one, but a little bit. Uh, Bo, let's get to your VR stuff this week uh, to start with. Let's start with the the Light Brigade. I don't know yeah, what this so, is. And it's a first person shooter. Well, I'll be thinking of VR's first person, I suppose. Well, that's not true. It's a shooter. Um, takes place in a weird indie realm. <laughs> it's An indie kind realm. Kind of a prone butt. Yeah, like okay. everything's heavenly and and you know. And, and weird and abstract and kind of a, a little bit of an annoying way, but not terrible. Um, and you play against, you have World War One weapons and a magic wand. 
And, <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, and and you got to use your magic wand and World War One yep. weapons to shoot um, spells and bullets at World War One like soldiers. Except they're not really like humans; they're like dead cell guys with uh, eye, eyes that are red. Um, but what made me pick up this game? Well, it got a lot of rave reviews as being an actually pretty fun roguelike mm-hmm. in the VR space. And, um, I was like, oh, let's check it out. You know, good reviews and I'm all about a roguelite. Yeah. So, uh, I gave it a gr- go and uh, I'm glad to say it's pretty fun, actually. Um, I have some misgivings about some things, but it's quick and easy to get into. Like you start up the game. Uh, and you just go. Um, it has sort of like a Dark Souls thing. When you die, you can go and collect your points. You still got to kill things, though, but if you collect your points, then you get them back sort of deal. You level up. There's different classes, different weapons, and upgrades, a whole upgrade tree. Uh, you know, need I say more? Everyone knows what a roguelite is sure. in 2023. Um, the gunplay is actually pretty good, so the weapons handle kind of crappy where you got to, like, chamber the round, and when you reload them... Uh, but the actual aim is pretty forgiving, and it can be pretty satisfying to shoot the bad guys. Um, it looks so it looked good. You just and shot it has some... a mix of something else. You got to pray to like see the enemies around you and to recover your body. See, I just recovered my body there. Yeah, and um, it's not fast paced. It's actually pretty slow. Like you're creeping through the forest, and you've got to like watch out for the soldiers and then take careful aim. And once you start shooting, the it'll alert some other soldiers, and you've got to play carefully. The biggest thing is that um, the actual, while the bullets don't look like bullets, they're like laser lights, it's actually pre- getting hit with them is pretty violent because they're very pronounced. You mm-hmm. can see them. So you really get a feeling like, what if you were shot with a bullet and you died? Like, you kind of get that feeling. You get shot. It's like, ugh, I just, I've just been shot. Like, it feels terrible. Uh, but like in an immersive way, you know, like not. Sure. So I appreciate that about the game. And yeah, it's a neat little roguelike. Uh, not lo- Not lots of really top tier um, releases uh, for VR. So, you know, when you get something that's pretty awesome, you tend to be like, wow. Uh, that being said, there's lots of room for improvement here. We're not talking Alex, but um, I like this quite a bit. Rare Pepe. Yeah, so that's <laughs> so you can, that's other other players are in the world and you can pray to get their, I got Rare Pepe's uh, whatever, space points, of some kind that I used to upgrade. Yeah. I love yeah. that guy's name. So, okay, I got a quick question about the shooting. It looked, it looks meaty. Like, uh, I like, a, I like a well, I like shooters like this too. But in VR, it really helps for me to feel like the shooting does something. And you, and you sort of described how when it hits you, it's pretty, yeah, pretty. The sound violent, and impact but... of the bullets are pretty good, actually. Okay, it's, that's, it's, that's... It's like it's video gamey. It's not like World War Two or World War One simulator. It, you know, they're they glow. There's like homing missiles and stuff like. It's more video gamey. It's not very realistic at all, except, you know, there's traps on the ground and the enemies are pretty lethal. In roguelike fashion, you die in this one. It's not. A lot of VR games are pretty forgiving. This mm-hmm. one will, will kill you. Are the other players um, visible to you when they're not dead? Um, um, no, there's no multiplayer in this game. Okay. It's just you can see other players. That's where they died. You can see where other players died. Okay. I know I was hoping for like an Elden Ring style. You can see how they died, but that's not available. That's what I was going to ask. It felt like yeah. it was going toward that, but I guess not. Yeah. Okay. It's a bit of a missed opportunity, but it's like light and actiony, easy to play. Not as much as Compound as I reviewed uh, before, but mm-hmm. yeah, I liked it. And there's it's a card system. It's just you. It's just your upgrades, that, right? It's your... the roguelike part where you mod your dude to do like corruption damage. Right. Or see, I've got souls corruption now. Sure. Um, I haven't made it that far in the game. I've only gotten to like the third zone because it's actually, you get killed pretty easily. I need upgrades. Right. <laughs> like I take three shots and I'm dead. Wow. So it can be pretty, it's pretty lethal, but I'm, I'm guessing with upgrades, I'll be able to, to do better. But uh, Ooh, I don't yeah. like those little dogs. Ugh. Yeah, the dogs are kind of rough. Yeah. Okay. I had a, um, a no country for old men moment where a dog was running at me and I had to reload and shoot him in the face as oh, quick as possible. Oh shit! And I was like, oh shit, no country for old men moment. I got to get this. And then the dog bit me, but I didn't die. So I'm like, okay, take two, take two. And then I did it the second time. I just watched that again. And that scene is insane. Like that, that dog coming after him when he gets out of the water or he's in the water. It's a, pretty str- it's a stressful. Unbelievable. You know, it still works. It's yeah. so good. All right, this looks rad. I think this looks actually pretty neat. Yeah. 
neat little um, game. Uh, yeah. If it's you know, I know we you know you you guys aren't playing too too much VR, but there's other things I probably recommend over it. But for the VR enthusiasts out there, uh, this is a decent buy for twenty bucks. Nice, it's, uh, worth it. All right, and then on the flat screen or in pancake mode, as Bo sometimes refers to it, they are billions. <laughs> How's that game? So that's a game I've been wishlisted for a long time, and I was like, you know what, I'm gonna get this, even though I already have it in the form of The Last Stand, which is. Kind of a, I don't think it's somebody this. I don't know if it's the same. It's definitely not the same company or developers. Mm. But um, is it called? No, it's not. Oh, called I have this game. too. I forgot about this game. Um, what's the one? I'm, uh, Age of Darkness Final Stand. But that's an early access. And I played it a bit and it's quite good. But There Are Billions is kind of the phenomenon that it was based on. I think it was played by a lot of people yeah. years ago. It's a bit older of a game. But um, I got to say, form and function uh, really go well together. Like, I usually don't like zombie games, mm. but I like it in this context in that what well, zombies don't do much. Like, of course, they're just going to... Like, zombies are the ultimate it-makes-sense tower defense game kind of thing because they literally do nothing else but walk towards their food. So... Um, you know, it's basically StarCraft style game where you build buildings, get units, you know, build up your resources, but there's a little more city management to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, was a train in this game? Damn, I didn't get that far. Um, <laughs> but I mean, is it video, but like, you know, you build up a settlement. This might be campaign mode too. Yeah. Um, but you build up a settlement in survival mode and you just got to survive so many days. And I survived like 120 days and died. So is it, it's basically StarCraft, that one StarCraft 2 map, the game. Dead, Dead of Night. Yeah, it's yeah. Dead of Night, the game, as a whole game, which is, it's fun. Like, it's neat. And I, I just, I think it's also Steam, like a sci-fi steampunk kind of deal. Mm-hmm. So all the people wear, like, you know, steampunk clothes and everything's like a kind of rural, kind of sci-fi, industrial revolution era, but futuristic sort of thing. So actually the, the, the setting here is really cool. And I always like the look of it. I just, I, just, it was, I, was I was looking for a comfort game. I didn't want to, I wanted to just turn a game on and play it and have a new experience. And this is what I settled on. Cause I was like, I know this has a survival mode. So, okay. So, so the reason I didn't play it or give it any time is not because I didn't think it looked cool. Cause I think it does, but I didn't because it looked like tower defense city builder <laughs> and I don't like tower defense at all. So it is, it is, it is the dead of night. Like it is tower defense, but it's turtle defense because you, you don't do you don't do tower defense in StarCraft. You turtle. Yeah. If you're you know you're Terran, you build your base and you turtle up. It's basically what this game is. So you go out in the map and proactively do things during downtime, and then when the horde comes, yes, it's orcs must die. Yeah, like you know, let's put all the traps on the ground and survive. But. Yeah, you know that's awesome. Uh, but it was it was a good time. I don't have much to say about it. It's been out for a while, and it, you know, I think a lot of people are going to be familiar with this kind of game. And it was more of a comfort choice pick than a oh my god, you'll never believe what I played kind of thing. Yeah, oh, very nice. Uh, again, it's that game, game is yeah. they are billions. We're now going to do a check in on yeah. Super Lake Run. So, um, how are you for streaming a game from your end? Because I think I can send you. I can totally so do I it. Have just, I have Nitro now, so I should be able to send you an EXE. I can do it. I have to run. Yeah, I set a, myself a, up to do this. Oh, is it a setup thing? No, I I think it's not hard. You send me the. Is it in the thing? So the okay. EXE is in the Discord. Just go ahead and download it. And... So here's what I'm gonna try to do. The problem is I'm not sure I can get. Oh no, I should get audio. Let's try this. You know, I've been doing my lessons and I got some good work done yesterday, incorporating some things of what I've learned. You know, you have a big checklist as you're practicing. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, as super lake run is my, just, you know, take what I've learned and apply it in the free form creative kind of way as shittily as I can. <laughs> and, yeah. um, and there's a few updates to the game. Nice. All right. Here's what I'm gonna do. Oh, you know what I need to do? Um, ah, oh, damn it. <laughs> Not as set up as I'd like to be. Sorry. Maybe I should have told you sooner. Well, I just read. It has sounds and stuff. Yeah, no, that's what I want to do is I want to make sure you'll hear the audio. And your fidelity is going to be better, I think, if you've been watching my camera. It's kind of low res. I'm going to download it. I won't, well, why won't it let me download it? It gave me an error. Hold on. Is it because it's a strange EXE? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, hey, can you, dangerous. Um, can you email it to me? Oh, you can't download it even. I put it in a RAR file. Oh, that might work. Let me try that. Okay. 
chat be oh it's still telling me i can't that's funky why i'm allowed to upload it but you're not allowed to download it yeah i don't understand that's really odd let me try um let me try one more time here let's see continue to download it just says no that's weird uh, uh do you have it in um yeah, email. Uh, just I, email. I, I, I signed up for Discord Nitro because I thought this would make it so seamless. But I, what a lesson I've learned. <laughs> well, it usually is because you can usually just send stuff over. But for some reason, this RAR file is just like farting out on me. Way to go, Nitro. Um, if you can, if you email that to me, just the my extra life at Gmail address. Okay, hang on, I'm sending. I'm, I'm uploading it to um, uh, Drive right now, and then I'll email you. Oh my yeah, extra Drive's life. great. Yeah. It's basically the same thing anyways. Yeah, I think if you even initiate it in um, uh, in Gmail, it'll just save it to drive naturally, but it doesn't matter either direction. All right, so while we get ready to do that, I just because I think this would be really cool to show. For those listening at home on the podcast, you're, you know, this isn't People, I, I streamed some of it last night, so people there were pretty impressed with just the progress of my learning. It's not an impressive game, but it's still nice to get some nice. All right, so I sent it your way. Yep, I'm going to download it now. Here we go. It's downloading, downloading. Download anyway. Okay, I did. Oh, just okay. run it. You don't got to install it or anything. Just just, just run it. Just double click it. Okay. Yeah, the hard part will be I can't really show you guys this, but the rest of the world will see it. So here it goes. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, we'll see it on your. Or we have your stream up. It says. Hold on. It says it's not down yet. Oh, Lake Run isn't commonly downloaded. Make sure you trust it. I do trust it. <laughs> it's not commonly downloaded. Make sure you trust yeah. it. I don't Keep want to delete him. it. What the heck? Show me the folder. It won't finish the download without me saying... Hold on. Oh, is this your... Commonly downloaded. That's, I probably didn't... I don't know what, signed it or something? Like... Like keep that. keep doesn't let you do anything, right? Keep delete. It just says make sure you trust Lake Run 2.0 before you open it. Oh, show more, show more. Hang on. Is there... uh, keep anyway. Okay, now it's finishing. There we there go. go. Wow, it's, like, yeah, it's really trying to protect you from from you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, all right, so it's running. I think. Yep. All right, there you go. Lake Run, perfect. Is it? It's, it's running. I don't see it run. Oh. You see it? Yeah, It'll take you a second. sound with. The... Oh, I will be. Hold on. All right. <laughs> what the? Super late, bro. That's my sound. <laughs> this is great. All right, you guys ready? Yeah. I'm gonna hit start. Let's see it. Do I want to do? <laughs> you got your own music in here, Bo. I love this. Yeah, it's just placeholder. All it's right. pretty poorly mixed, but yeah, there's some music in What's there. What's my controls here? Uh, it'll tell you when you press start. Okay, so I hit hitting WASD and C. So, yeah, left mouse button to shoot the poo. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Is it not going full screen if you, like, alt enter? Oh, can I, can I do that? Ugh. It won't go full screen. Uh, <laughs> something All weird's right. going on. It's full screen on mine. Oh, maybe, are you running in high res? You're not 1080p. Oh, right? yeah, I'm You're running in. 1020 for, that would uh, be why. I don't have options to change screen size. You guys can hear this, right? Yeah. I can hear some of it, yeah. <laughs> so see, one of the, the... So look, first of all, there's a poo meter on the bottom left, Diablo style. Yeah. So as you poo, it's one, one poo mana per poo shot. So if you need to refill it up, press P for a po poo potion. Okay. Dude. Yeah, and so you'll do damage about 10 to 30, and if you see a yellow, that's a crit, you know. <laughs> and so so the things I've on. added were you're aiming with the mouse now, so where you point the mouse, yeah. like if you point up, right now it shits up, which probably I should fix. Oh, but I see. Okay. If you, yeah, it'll, it'll aim towards the mouse. And so I added that in, mouse controls, and then I added the poo meter and the drinking. And then I gave all the fish, like I put collision detection in, so finally it triggers damage when you hit the fish. And I put health bars on all the fish, but made it appear only when they've taken damage. And, and I did a death explosion and added some sounds in. 
Did and you also, not... you can quit the game by pressing escape now. So, <laughs> wow, yeah. you're ahead of a long some way. Square Enix ports there, Bo. So did I? Do I ever? Um, do I need to? Uh, I never die, right? That's just gonna live forever here. No, no, I don't have. Again, it's a work in progress, but this is a pretty big jump for me to actually add damage and death. Like it's all. This is amazing. It's all spaghetti code, man. It's so poorly written. It's hilarious. I love it. There's nothing I like more than what we're looking at here. This is great. Yeah. But it represents a lot of things figured out. And I had some really good momentum. I was like putting in one feature after another. I was like, oh, this is going smoother than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. Um, like I still had to look things up, but it was effort. But I, I was pleased with how much I got done because I've been playing Diablo too much. So well, like, remember, you too, you were having trouble with like stuff that's now in there. You You weren't sure how to have collision on turds you weren't sure how to have the fish go away how to like, do floating damage decks like now i can do that and yeah, i gotta figure yeah, out i gotta damage get damage numbers he's ahead a lot of games right now yeah i gotta add i gotta add p and i've got to put some you know i want to have some actual enemy behavior so that they fight you i need to put food in the game yeah when you kill a fish it should make a, a fish stick yeah. rise up and that's i want i want that to be the primary way you regenerate poo by eating fish the fish you kill in the <laughs> shitty lake <laughs> and and you need a little reticule um, so I, I keep losing the mouse yeah yeah i gotta i gotta also put uh some graphics to replace just a generic windows mouse cursor look how and stoked then, the know, chat we'll... is they're all ready to throw five bucks at this like now like they want to go <laughs> it's just, it's just, the extent of the game is what you've seen however i do have some other assets i could probably use for backgrounds and i don't know we can talk if it actually becomes like it works then maybe we can talk art uh, and get this oh thing. hell yeah Hell yeah. And I sort of have this idea for a story where I'll need voices for all three of you, and maybe John can help write some lines um, where we're just like camping, right? It's you, me, and John. <laughs> yeah. And you guys are saying some shit. And I'm like, I'll be right back. And then I go to the bush to shit, but then it's bad. Yeah. So then I jump in the lake and then I go shit. Mm-hmm. And then I'll shit. There'll be like some generic gameplay, like what you're seeing. And then like the protector of the ocean will come and be like, I violated. Mm some pact of water and i'm cursed to be forever stuck in the water and never leave I love because it. i shat in the pristine lake <laughs> and then that'll be how the game i gotta kill her forces to break my curse and i figure you guys could be on the radio to be like bo are you ever coming back like we could do like Star Fox style voice lines you know what i mean so like i think you guys could you guys can like star heavily in this I love it so much. Thing as yep. you, you might be like, oh, back in my day, we used to eat fish to generate poo. Why don't you try eating a fish now, there, Bo? Can we you make? Know, and- can we make? Uh, can we? Can I want to draw fish? Look, look at this fish version of John I put in those cards a couple years ago. <laughs> uh, yeah. See that? that yeah, maybe be... there's some NPCs we can voice too. We don't have to just have your guys. Yeah. You can... But I think, or you if should... you just rather be fish in the game, I mean, I, I'm flexible. This could be a good. This would be a boss, and this boss would go. I don't think Starfield looks all that great. Yeah. And then you yeah. Shoot it. Honestly, Starfield <laughs> leaves a lot to be desired. Yeah, Starfield's pretty lame. That's a great fish. Oh, yeah, I forgot. You do really great fish. I like my fish. So, yeah, I got all the fish art you need. Oh, John can God. write. We can all do voice. Bill's got music chops. He's programming. We got this thing. Uh, I mean, I'm still working on the bait. Like, once I think we get the base in, like, a lot, uh, make it, like, feature full, and then it's just a matter of making, like, I want to, I kind of have a picture of like an army of fish and jellyfish, like all kinds of things to shit on and like some, make sure some AI to sort of attacks and make like a, I don't know. Like I'm, I'm, I'm aiming 99 cent game. I don't know if this game's a four ninety nine, <laughs> but if you think four ninety nine is the way to go, maybe, I don't know. But I think you could do three, you do four ninety nine. you launch at three ninety nine on sale, 10% off, whatever that percentage is. Um, you got all the beta testers in the world that we could choose from. We got all kinds of trusted voices. It's like, literally we can make this game. Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, we'll we'll see we'll see like what you know. We're, we're early. This is alpha, guys. You're used to getting betas. This is, you've literally watched the game be made. You know, it's like the first few weeks of inception, and it's like five which or is six so hours fun to watch. I mean, I can't speak for everybody, but we've getting a lot of feedback. And I'm learning while I do it, so that's usually now. I need to take a break and learn some other shit. I don't know how to save the game. Oh <laughs> like, yeah, we you save. want save games? I have no idea how to do that. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> F five. It just works somehow. Um, yeah. No, people have been saying how much they love hearing about this process. So uh, sharing it with everybody's been good. I'm glad we're yeah. doing that. 
That's awesome, dude. That Lexer's looks great. edition with the vial of lake water. Oh my god! Did none of these? Did any of these <laughs> fart noises I gave you help at all? You found? Oh, well, I haven't used them yet. There was a little late. I asked you a little late because I was already working on stuff. But uh, it's never too late. We can incorporate it. That's just um, you can modulate sounds to make it sound like more than one poo sound, right? Like right. By just transposing by point one to lower or heighten the sound. So it sounds like it's a bunch oh. of different files, but it's just. It's a is, trick. Is that how they do running more. and walking sounds in games? They make it yeah, sound like the yeah. footfalls. Yeah, uh, they might use the same sound file, but just module like transpose it all, ever so slightly. They might use one or two different sounds, but modulate them, and then you have like fifty sounds. That's like a boss fart. Yeah. No, and there's some like so the poo. I have a big range of abilities that I've been dreaming up. Like I just dream about my shit now. Thanks everyone for me. <laughs> not, yeah. Well, but, like you know, I want to have like a, a poo taunt. Like I you shit out like a soldier shaped thing that falls out and the fish attack it and it taunts everything. <laughs> like, and then I want to like maybe if there's a bird level where you can strap a big metal diaper with a gun ho like a like a Ghostbusters thing, but instead of a backpack, it's strapped into your crotch right. and then you shoot the birds with the shit. Yeah. Um, I want to have like upgrades so that you know right now you're shooting turds, but maybe the turds break into mini turds and then hit other things yep. and heat seekers, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. homing a floater yeah. where it comes out and makes a big U and goes back up to the top. It's like a boomerang. Oh, right, dude, right. right. Take stuff and on the need, way like, down and on the way up. I love that. It's good. Yeah, and like also one of those rotating shields. You know the book in Vampire Survivor. Yeah. Yeah. We need like some sort of poo that just circles around you like. <laughs> Like flame poo or something. Well, as you can see, greatest game ever coming soon. Watch for it. All right. Yeah. I'm so excited. All right. Uh, that'll do it for now while we take a break. When we come back, dear Martha, uh, some other news stories that we uh, skipped over or haven't talked about yet. We'll also play a call for you today. We got a text, all kinds of fun stuff lined up. So don't go too far because we'll be right back. All right. All right, I will be right. back. I am gonna actually going to reboot everything. Oh, because I'm okay. getting a weird delay with you guys. Oh, like an oh. occasional stutter. I think it might be Zoom. I forgot to update, even though Scott told me to. Oh, it could be. Um, that. Yeah. Sometimes. So I'm, I'm going to reconnect to everything while we're on break. All right, no worries. Parents are like, Jake, I mean, Bo, Jabo. Oh, Jabo, yeah, I can see that. So it's it's uh, destiny. Yeah. That you do this to John and I. I'm used to it. Jabot. It is destiny. Um, all right, let's uh, let me get back to where we can start back in. Hold on one second. Okay. Oh, I, I mean, know. our names are really close, John. Yeah, it's very close. Yeah. Bo and John it couldn't be. Closer. If I had an N, I'd be Bond, and you'd be John. Yep. Bond and, and we'd John. Be John Bond. John Bond Scotty. John Bond Scotty. Or there was a yep. Bond Scotty. Was the drummer for uh, ACDC and then died or something? Do I have that right? Bond Scott. Who was he with? <laughs> Bon Scott was with somebody. Right? Did that That's, happen? This, did I make that up? All right. Where am I? We're back, everybody. Uh, thank you for your patience during our break. We are now going to dive directly headlong into a Dear Martha that John has prepared. Uh, John is mostly there anything? prepared. Mostly prepared. Might be a little more ad libbed <laughs> than normal. All good. Uh, anything special here? Or just the regular old deal. It's the regular old deal. Here we go then. My dearest Martha. This is new territory for me. I picked up a copy of Game Now, the magazine that has, or had, www.gamers.com as a domain. That's not important to this review, just worth noting. Anyway, this is for this is from issue 7 of May of 2002. Mm. And if I haven't said it already, let me say it now. Early 2000s gaming is awful. And wonderful. <laughs> like a Disney movie you remember being really important to you, but then makes you uncomfortable with how it depicts other races of people when you try to watch it again. It's a time full of stuff I absolutely loved while making my stomach eat itself with cringe content. But I've gone off on a tangent. I mentioned new territory, and this will indeed be that. You see, I did not expect Game Now Issue 7 to be the content goldmine it has proven to be. Within the first moment of looking through it, I had multiple candidates for the best or worst ad, so I decided to make an all-ads focused letter. But then I read the issue, and there was too much to talk about to not do so. So can you see where I'm going with this? Martha, this letter is a two-parter. 
Starting with the ads of this magazine. As stated above, this was a time where women certainly played video games, but you wouldn't have known it looking in these magazines. They catered to the male demographic. Take this classic ad for Gauntlet Dark Legacy with the phrase, the game where you and three buddies get to be heroes. Only thing is, one of you has to be the chick. Oh my lord. <laughs> really? Okay. Wow. Now, obviously, this is an advertisement that would probably not get made these days. But what I really love is that they not only did this ad and thought it was a good idea at the time, they doubled down and had one of the players looking at the female player saying, Nice rack, dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's terrible. It's truly something to see. I mean, forget the logic that already has to go through your head of, if this is how they actually felt, why did they include it in the game? And then if they included it in the game, why are they making an ad about it? It's circular logic that you will never find an escape from. Mm. And look, I'm sorry to people who can't see visuals on this one, but I also had to share this ad for 007 Agent Under Fire, which promised us beautiful Bond girls on PlayStation 2 graphics. Just look at them. I think I've been more titillated by a gust of wind than looking at these pixels, Martha. I know you can't go back. I know that at the time, maybe this is all we had and we didn't know, but uh, this is unfortunate for many, many reasons. But it wasn't all attempts to appeal to primitive man uh, that made me laugh. Like this ad for three different Game Boy Advance peripherals. That original handheld was so poorly designed that they actually sold these monstrosities. A worm light, which looked like a silly straw that hovered directly over the screen so that you could <laughs> choose whether or not you wanted to see what was on the screen because... A giant light was shining down on it, or not see it because it was too dark to see anything at all. The shock and roll, which basically turns your Game Boy Advance into the ugliest rumble pack you've ever seen. Mm. Or the Super Magna Light, a peripheral that makes it look like a transformer by not only making the screen bigger, but also now shining two bright lights down on top of the magnified screen. <laughs> I really can't stress how awful the Game Boy Advance was when it first came out. It is truly a wonderful system, Martha, but... I mean, the system's so bad I haven't even talked about this ad with this man and his tiny little eyeballs. <laughs> Someone in the chat said, why is Mark Zuckerberg in this ad? Very nice. <laughs> Very nice. Okay, how about fanning the stupid-ass console war flames even higher with the Crash Bandicoot the Wrath of Cortex ad that boldly touts that Crash is running with a whole new crowd as he gets an Xbox tattoo. I'm sure this didn't really set us back on the internet several more years of Sony v Microsoft by taking the beloved PlayStation icon and have him getting even edgier with his sick Xbox tattoo. <laughs> it's funny Diablo is doing that. <laughs> yeah. The last ad I wanted to point out isn't exactly the funniest. It's not the most out of touch, it's not sexist or anything else. It's just a picture of Derek Jeter reading a magazine. Yeah. Along with the words, Derek Jeter caught reading on it. <laughs> Martha, it's an advertisement where they're treating the fact that Derek Jeter is reading a magazine like tabloid news. Look at this guy. We caught him in the middle of enjoying a magazine, when really the true crime is that he's pulling the Walker Texas Ranger reverse sit in a chair to read that magazine. <laughs> As I said, this was just the ads, but I assure you there is much more in this magazine itself to enjoy, which of course we will get to in part two of my letter. So until then, yours in time as always. S. Beggett, 2002. Wow. A two-parter we have to look forward to. That's amazing. We haven't done that before. Now, to, just a quick note to patrons. Because uh, you don't get to see this sort of stuff while John's talking about because we're doing it live, you don't get to see the visuals, I'm going to put those in today's post. Okay. There you go. This yeah. was a very visual-heavy one. I felt bad, but I usually 
you know, it's a lot of work to decide which ad I want to do. Mm -hmm. And there were so many stupid ads in this. And that's not even counting the dumb products the magazine itself tried to sell you. Yeah. Um, there was the worst Solid Snake action figure I've ever seen in my life. Um, <laughs> oh, this I was see right that. when the sp the first Sam Raimi Spider Man movie was about to come out, so they were putting Spider Man in everything, <laughs> and it all just looks terrible. Mm. It's truly a wonderful time. Yeah, it was a wonderful time to be alive. Oh, that's right. Two thousand two would have been we'd have been in the thick of the Sam Raimi Spider Man business. Yeah. By about a year or six months or something. Well, anyway, fantastic as always. Love this stuff. Let's now move on to some stuff you missed from earlier. Other news, that is to say. Uh, Suicide Squad, kill the Justice League. Delayed again, possibly due to backlash about their bad business practice. Possible uh, th things. Uh, they, we don't know for sure because they're not saying. But uh, they basically, uh, Schreier broke the story as he often does. Uh, saying that the, uh, the the game's been delayed. So if you were looking forward to that, you're going to be waiting until, let's see, they give the new date. Uh, no new word, uh, no new date yet. Yeah, a is... lot of people speculating it's because of outrage. I don't think so, because Jason Schreier's tweets actually do say it's for polish. But uh, considering the issues people have have nothing to do with polish, I, I don't know if it's going to be enough to save the game. I'll bet you polish in this word. This is, polish is a code word for we may have to strip out some of the more egregious store business that we inserted in here that nobody asked for i don't know we'll see we'll see yeah. people are not happy about this uh, game if you're making a game and you're making a games as service game i would be very nervous right now because players definitely seem like the the winds are shifting on that and people are are not pleased it seems no and this is the rock steady game it'll be the last rock steady game with the founders there and there's a legacy there you got to uphold. So I'm, I'm very hopeful that whatever happens here gets ironed out and is not as big a deal as we all think it is. Gamers tend to overreact. We'll give it some time. Like John is with Starfield, we'll be this way with this. We'll wait yeah. and see. It Although, looks... speaking of hot takes about video games, the legacy of Rocksteady for me is to uh, steadily get worse and worse with each game you put out. So yeah. if, if this is bad... It's just going with the trend. Yeah, but I still think Gotham Knights a good game. It's a good game. I didn't say Gotham Knights a bad game, but I would play uh, Arkham City before it, and I would play Arkham Asylum before that. That's a fair point. Our, the original Arkham Asylum was a was a Metroid game, and I will never yeah. I will never deviate from that opinion in, in a in a good way, in a great way. Anyway, uh, moving on to this story. If you were getting the $200 Resident Evil 4 remake physically from GameStop, they canceled it. You don't now you don't get it. Yeah. You get your money know. back, but you're not getting the thing that they told you you were getting. So. Yeah. Tough to Kind of strange and honestly a really bad move for GameStop. Mm -hmm. To have a major title where you just go, "Hey, we're yeah, we're not going to fulfill those pre-orders." Like GameStop is already struggling. And they they lean so heavily on pre-ordering their content that uh, it, it just like if you lose hearts and minds for people who go to your store and pre-order stuff, yep. like that's that's super bad. It makes me I put it in my queue and I haven't seen it yet, but there's a new documentary called Oh uh, Eat the Rich, I think. That is this whole the whole story about the GameStop stock stuff that happened a year ago. Two years ago? Yeah. It sounds super fascinating, and I kind of want to watch it, but I am also kind of have this feeling of, you know, this place I used to love to go into is now just kind of a piece of shit, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's great these days. No, and I worked while. there. I watched it happen from yeah, the you inside. Yeah, you saw it from the inside. Um, Bo, how pissed would you be if your $200 collector's edition was mysteriously canceled at the place you bought it? I mean, as long as there's no problem with the refund, I guess I'll survive. You'll make it. It's not a likely situation, but certainly, yeah, I don't know. It's a bummer, I, mean, right? I, I would be irritated. But if I got my money back, it'd be fine. But I just, did they take money? I assume, as John said, they survive on pre-orders, that money comes out immediately. Yeah. Yeah. And if that's the case. I mean, they're going to have to yeah, pay you back. You don't want to give me my money back for some reason. Of course, I'd be furious. I mean, they have to, right? 
this would be. But how do they like? I guess yeah. They, I guess they have your pre-order slip, but I've never really pre-ordered too many video games physically. I've done it lots digitally. Mm. Um, and the interesting oh, thing is, this works. is only for people that went physically into the store. So while it makes sense from a, a standpoint of uh, they paid with a credit card. Theoretically, I don't know how GameStop's doing this, but theoretically you could just refund the card, whatever was paid, because you have the option to pay a minimal down payment all the way up to the cost of the game itself. But if somebody did that with cash, presumably they are going to have to go into the store to receive their cash refund right. back from the store. Right. Which, you know, now it's not the end of the world like oh crap i had to make another trip to gamestop but uh <laughs> it certainly doesn't look good yeah i think it's yeah i agree um also uh i mean this looks like a pretty cool pack i mean i don't know about you john you love that series you love that game yeah you're getting that right i assume you're gonna play oh, yeah. for it i'm gonna I'm I'm get it i'm only doing it if someone buys it i oh, ain't really? doing it you're, you're you're doing it john damn oh, john loves well not the 200 dollars no no, oh no no no! He's not doing that. I'm I'm gonna play the game and yeah. get the sixty dollar game. From what I've seen, it looks like a hell of an upgrade. Oh my gosh! John shared something on our Discord today. I have to tell people about. I hadn't seen this before. <laughs> if you've ever seen an idiot abroad, which is this Carl Pilkington, Ricky Gervais thing, where he sends him to other weird, exotic places in the world and just kind of leaves him hanging to deal with it, it's a really great docu thing that they put on Sky TV in the UK and eventually ended up on Netflix here. I think it still is. Anyway, it kind of depends on you knowing about that to really get the most out of it. But basically, somebody cut Carl out and green screened him into uh, into Resident Evil Seven scenarios, and it's perfect. It is so funny. I about died. So, John, maybe put that link in the chat if you have it handy. I don't know if you okay. do. Okay. Yeah. It's I'll very copy funny. What I did. Yeah. Um, all right. So let's move on to this story. Epic Game Store is providing self service publishing flow tools to indie developers. And this is seen a, a little bit as a not a shot over the bow, but this is an effort uh, to make life easier for indie devs who want to publish on their platform. Um, Steam offers not maybe not similar tools, but they offer tools in the same way. Anyway, for yeah, about 100 right. bucks. Steam works. Yeah, Steam works, all that stuff. Uh, for about a hundred bucks, you can do this. You sign up at epic.games, epicgames.com. Uh, you create an account. You spend a hundred bucks as the submission fee, and uh, you per build game. it per game. Per game, right? And I don't then, think you have to pay a hundred to actually sign up for the account, which is interesting. Yeah, that is weird. But per game, uh, you build and publish a coming soon page, so you make your own thing there. Uh, you build, test, and rate your game. Pretty sure these are the exact same tools that Steam gives players or gives developers. Uh, you submit the game for review. Once Epic approves it, you launch your game and you have a global audience of potentially 200 million plus users, they say. And you keep and you keep 88% of the revenue, which is their big touted difference between them and Steam. They don't do the 70-30. Yeah, assuming you don't use the Unreal Engine and also qualify for other deductions. I imagine that's on top of it. But, oh, right, right. Um, that's just for the store use. So I don't I don't know if this is too this feels more like them getting closer to parity option parity with Steam and less of an innovation here. This is just them saying, you know, we're, we're trying to take a dig in. I think I was reading an interview and Tom Sweeney was saying like their exclusives like Borderlands Three and stuff were pretty big hits. Yeah, but the indie game side of things were not when they tried to do exclusivity with indie games. Mm -hmm. uh, he's just saying like Steam just has a stranglehold on the indie game space for being the go-to place the best like there's obviously itch.io and lots of places to humble like there's other places to publish but steam is the it in terms of audience and reach right you want to see you want to sell on steam yeah so they're trying a different strategy i think by letting this uh open up except the one big difference is they're not they're very staunchly against asset flip games, they call them, which is take the popular genre and just use some commonly reused assets and put together, you know, shovelware, basically, mm. and porn. And porn. Okay. Yeah. So Steam's, you know, all about uh, Sex Hitler and, uh, you know, just uh, Cthulhu and My Bed With Me kind of games. Right. And <laughs> my Demon Girlfriend visual novel. <laughs> like just, yeah. you know, all kinds of great titles. Uh, that will still be exclusive to Steam on the adult side of things. 
that you will not find. Do you think Orc Massage Epic. would make it over there on Epic? No, no. no. Then they have someone. They're gonna. They said they're gonna. Every submission, they're gonna play twenty minutes and evaluate it. Wow. So I don't know what that means, but. Um, except yeah. what it literally means, but you know, I don't know if that means. <laughs> I don't know what twenty minutes of the gameplay means. But, yeah. Well, you know, you can hide stuff after like twenty minutes. So I was, I was like, just twenty minutes. But yeah. Twenty it, minutes but... does seem. I mean, I'm sure logistically that there's a reason for it, but twenty minutes. Something's gonna like get nothing. through. I played an hour of that ogre tactics game, and nothing happened in that hour. So I'm yeah. like, yeah. Oh. So I, you know, I am sure there'll be a controversy sooner or later. They'll let something through that's not very brand safe for a corporation. Mm-hmm. Where Valve's privately owned, so like if the owners are just cool with it. No one's going to be humiliated out of it unless it's egregious, which Steam does act on. But they are pretty permissive, but they stick by their guns. And you know, I was looking at penises today. And it was like, oh, <laughs> just another just another day on Steam. Well, you click a thing and then you open it up and you're like, well, there's some dung. <laughs> I thought I don't, I don't know why I expected this not to be. A, I can't remember what game it was. You know, it's just I don't hide them anymore. Whatever. Let me just just let me see. It's all like stuff. waifu uh, uh, waifu dormitory four or something. And 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 usually though they don't give you dong right away. <laughs> you have to like go deeper to see uh to see it but like the hitler one was hard for me not to click i just i had to i was like i mean hit sex with hitler i'm like oh come on this isn't real is it clicked it oh it's real all right i don't know i'm pretty weak when it comes to the click like i'm not interested in sticking around for long but when you like you know uh i'm looking at idle hands too right now i'm like oh booby like uh don't click booby i clicked anyways and then i'm like okay i saw the booby that's great let's move on cartoon booby um yeah so i don't think uh, steam is is making out like it's not going to have stuff like that but i think because they're uh, corporate or epic be, you mean yeah, yeah. stuff yeah epic sorry stuff might get through and it might get taken down i i feel like it's going to be a little more uh i think this is going to be potentially just uh in, endear steam to more people than anything else but i think it's still a good move that they're opening up for indie developers it's a it's great news if you're making just a regular old game. Mm-hmm. Epic is a nice place to get your games for a lot of people. <laughs> Not sure. necessarily me. I but, mean, it is funny, though, um, that a game like uh, Hades, a game like um, Darkest Dungeon 2, which is still there, these games show up there first. They get a chunk of money there because that's they're they're lured there they're 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 prestige indie titles and they get a chunk of money just for doing that for having the exclusivity for 6 months or whatever and then it sounds like not that many people buy it there and the few that do often these devs will give them steam keys when they move to steam because they feel bad <laughs> they're like well we oh. we feel bad that you were over there with us but we appreciate you that you were so now that you're here on steam here's a key that happened to me with Hades or not Hades satisfactory was it I think they gave me a key. I was gonna oh, say because really? I did Hades and nobody gave me a Steam. Yeah, it wasn't key. Hades. That game twice. Yeah, it wasn't Hades. It was uh, it was satisfactory, but uh, but anyway, I, it, it, that is interesting that that category of game uh, indies is you know even though you see them over there that they haven't had the they haven't taken the way that they do on Steam. So anyway, yeah, but you know, still it's pretty cheap relatively speaking. Eighty eight percent keep is nice and 100 percent or 100 dollars seems pretty a very low barrier to entry yeah um so there it is uh psvr 2 is doing well in the reviews and uh i think that may have driven something the quest and quest 2 prices are cut back to nearly what they used to be yeah so oh. it's kind of funny to think i am i think probably a little bit because you know there's turmoil over there on the face the meta offices they probably increased the price, and I'm guessing sales slowed down. Now, I did see a staggering thing. VR is not a huge market share, but mm-hmm. they did move in lifetime 20 million uh, Quest and Quest 2 units. Oh, yeah, by far the leaders. Which is not a space. small amount, mm-hmm. you know? Like, no. that seems like great. I think it probably doesn't match <clears throat> up to the investment still that they put into it. Specifically, they were saying more recently people who pick up VR headsets are not they're not retain, retained as long like in terms of regular use yeah um and i you know i could talk about why that is i know i was reading an article that there's no killer app and i'm like it exists it's half-life alex and it's 
It should be on PlayStation PS2 VR. It's a, it's like that. If anyone was thinking of buying it, I would say, but you're gonna miss Half Life Two, uh, Half Life Alex. Like yeah. you should wait for a new quest or buy a quest or get a used one. They have a decent relationship like, with Sony. I wouldn't be surprised if they ported it. If to be I, honest. they really, really should. I think the hardware is probably up to task for the PS2, PS5, and all that. So, mm-hmm. yeah. But um, but no, the Quest Three is around the corner. Yeah. Sounds like next year. Uh, or maybe sometime late this year, and oh no, it sounds like this year. Yeah, we'll be still it still hard to tell who the year. pro is for. I feel like they're marketing that weird. It was originally like, oh, this is for enterprise, and but now I see ads all the time saying, go to or go pro. Either way, you'll have the best VR in your house you ever had. And it's like, okay, well, I guess it's not for corporate. You still want yeah. me to spend a thousand bucks for your thing? I don't know. Yeah. The issue is the VR has killer <clears throat> apps. Like Alex is the killer app. The killer app to me well, is Beat Saber because that's the most universal. That's another one. That's yeah. another one for sure. Absolutely, because like, everyone can really play that. Reasons. Yeah, it's just one. It, selling it, you can't sell it on a TV screen. Like the, you have to, you know, have tried it, know what it's about. And two, there is friction using it. You're isolated from everyone else. Where even if you only, you're the only one that plays the Switch or the, the Xbox, you can still be like, but it's for the family. We can watch a movie together on. It. Like it's. Yeah. You know, as an entertainment center, it's really just a solo thing. So if you don't have time or you don't want to be strapped and isolated and look like a weirdo in front of your family members, you know, it, it, there's just friction there. Yeah. And I think it's going to, I think it's going to remain an enthusiast uh, sort of toy. But um, uh, there's a lot of units sold. Anyways, I guess the, the neat thing is it's coming back down in price. So anyone who waited, you're now going to be able to buy it for... You know what's weird, too? Weird, because that's a decent number. 20 million units sold is really good. The only thing better than that, I think the numbers for PlayStation 4's PSVR 1 sold more than that. However, they're stuck there. They don't move forward. They're a, they're a device that worked with your PlayStation 4, and that's it. And these new games aren't going to be able to use it. And even the new headset can't use the old games. So you might get lucky with a couple of them and get them for free because you already own it or whatever. But for the most part, it's a brand new ecosystem to invest in. I don't and think so, they're going to age well either. Like, you know, no. people are like, oh, I wish I had my old Super NES. I'd play my Super NES games. Like, pixel art games have kind of aged well. Yeah. Classic gaming, it's a niche, nostalgia. Sure. I don't think anyone's going to want to play low res, fuzzy, old, you know, rift and games and stuff like you just kind of want you want that fidelity we're not in that age yet where you're like uh, the good old days like it does still... feel like vr is in the ps1 and 64 phase you know yeah. awkward phase a little bit of an awkward phase there's some really amazing things in that awkward phase there's the mario 64s of the world and there's the the metal gear solids of the world but for the most part from a hardware and like you know standpoint it feels like we're just on the edge of somewhere else and that somewhere else is a place i think even people like john get in there like we're just not quite there. There's just like a little yeah. bit of it. I don't know what it is. There's an affordability. There's a there's a ubiquity. There needs to be a something happens where you'll know it because I'll be excited. Because you'll it. be excited exactly. I'm a I'm a barometer. Yeah, like uh, Starfield on VR done. <laughs> uh huh. All right, fine. Uh, Fallout seventy six on VR. Now you're in. Admit it. You're super stoked. No. No. Oh, no. shit. All right. Uh, Forget it then. Uh, I right. think, you know what? It's game. I think it's I think it's less that the games are thinking of and more games like the one you played, Contraband Police. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. More. It's in the close range. It's in the intimate experience. We just don't have the games or the, the that sentiment to, and I, we don't believe in those games as big sellers, but I really think and intimacy is just harder because yeah. it sounds like porn and then we're not well, I don't want to make porn that's weird no, you're right though if I could like but walk around like, those cars and in that so that would be a great first person experience maybe drop the driving but the, I, I yeah yeah like even just video wise I watched uh, Macklemore has a concert right now on Oculus and it's still room for improvement but I, you know I have been watching checking out the concerts that Oculus has been doing and that one was pretty all right. It was like an audience member up high and they changed the angles and stuff. It was, you get a different vibe from people. Somehow people look, it's weird. Like on a flat TV screen, people like I look human, but I kind of look better than I am on this flat screen. And I think we all do. Yeah. When you see people in real life, you're like, oh, they're like sweaty, hairy, 
uh, full of pores, uh, like just a pimple. people. And it's like yeah. both. It's still compelling, but also like real in a way that flat kind of isn't in this in this weird sensation. Like the shitty nose. And then I watched mine. a, I a short nose. film in French, and yeah. it was actually well done. And, and the woman, like it wasn't like porn, but like the woman was like kind of attractive, and she was talking. And you know, as I was watching it, it was like it was titillating and interesting to watch. It's like five minute thing. It's on Oculus. You can just watch it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's like a love story. There's a guy that's there and she's, you know, it's not very well written, I don't think. And, and, but it's still interesting, you know? So yeah. I think there's, anyways, I say the same thing every time this comes up. I didn't mean to turn this into the BR show, but um, <laughs> it's all right. But the beer, the quests are cheaper. There you yep, go. There you go. Nailed it. Uh, also get some chicken because then you can get Diablo 4 beta access. Yes, that's right. KFC is doing what? a, uh, a deal right now where if you go in and buy a, a double down, just still, I thought that went away, but I guess that's still a thing you can do. It's back. Yep, it's back, baby. Um, you go get yourself a, a that, and it'll give you a beta access to the game. That is the early beta access to the game. Otherwise, you could just get beta open access, which is coming also. That's just that this is good. This, this will get it to you earlier, like the pre order people are getting. Let me give you another John Hot take. Go. Because uh, someone in chat said earlier today, oh, look, John with a bad opinion, shock. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, if, love it. Love it. If somebody's going to call me out for bad opinions, then you're getting every goddamn one I think of here on the show. <laughs> here, here's what I think. Go. If you are willing to eat a double down to get beta access to Diablo 4, you can just pre-order the game and get beta access to Diablo 4. You don't need a double down. You don't need to go to KFC. You don't need to suffer. Yeah. Just pre-order the game. I know we usually say don't pre-order games, but rather than suffer the double down, just just go pre-order the game and get early beta access. Yeah, and for those who don't know, the double down is literally chicken for buns on the outside. Okay, so you two pieces of chicken where you would normally have buns, you have chicken, and then there's, is it more chicken in the middle? How does a double down work? It would be bread if it was if it was inverse, but it might just be more chicken. <laughs> All right, I it don't, would I think be it's better a sandwich uh, that just speaking, uses chicken for bread. Speaking as someone who had bread inside of the burger today, I tried the chicken Big Mac. Yeah, today. Not Wait, they're doing a with... 